first item of business today is the executive director's report. The executive director is on vacation this week. So in her place, our general counsel, Judy Henkin, will deliver the report. The understudy fills in. Um, the only thing I have to report is we have not had a regular meeting in uh, several weeks. Since that time, the board has issued the um, decisions in Blue Cross and Blue Shields uh, Qualified Health Plan, the individual and small group market, and in also MVPs, um, individual and small group market filing. Uh, Blue Crosses was issued, I believe, on August 14th. And in that filing, the board reduced the average annual rate um, increase from 9.6 to 5.8%. And because there are increased availability of tax credits, the average rate felt by Vermonters is approximately 3.2%. And the total savings is an estimated slightly under $13 million on that filing. In MVP's filing, the board reduced the average annual rate change from 10.9 to 6.6 percent and with taking into consideration the premium tax credits the average rate change felt by Vermonters is approximately 1.9 percent and that savings was a little over six million and I guess the only other thing I wanted to bring up is I know that we had um, some uh, we had what was called a petition that came in today and I think I've discussed that with you. I don't know if you want to just address that briefly at the start, um, because it was in uh, VT Digger this morning. Sure. So um, for those who read Vermont Digger, they know that um, Ken Liebertop has um, submitted a petition, um, which in this particular case is, is almost a public comment. Um, because we don't have a formal petition process. Um, but I will say that um, as um, I'm trying to remember the word that Mr. Liebertoff used. Um, well, in the article, it, the quote was that it was um, that doing the two requested tasks in the petition would be symbolic. Symbolic, that's the word I'm looking for. So. Um, as much as that it would be symbolic, um, I'm just going to say that um, at this point, the board has never um, interfered in any type of contractual relationship that an institution has, um, either with an employee or an outside party. And while we um, do uh, examine their budgets, what we're what we are looking at is. Um, basically um, revenues and expenses and we don't get into um, such detail to set someone's specific salary or um, say how much a, 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 a hospital bed would cost or things like that um, we do however try to shine light on things and I think that this board has acted in a manner to try to create the transparency um, that allows um, the overall Vermont community to see what expenditures are. And in fact, in our guidance, we tell the hospitals that they must submit the hospital's policy or policies on executive provider and non-medical staff compensation. And they have to identify outside consultants relied on for benchmarking, peer groups to which the hospitals benchmark, compensation targets in terms of percentiles for each staff category and the hospital's actual compensation level compared to target for each employee group, for example, executive, provider, and non-medical staff. So we believe that we are bringing information to the public and more specifically to individual hospital board members so that they can make um, better decisions. And I think it's through that transparency that comes to light when there is a deviation from what uh, a particular community will accept as far as compensation and not accept. So we feel that we're shining the light on it and it's now up to individual um, board members at the hospitals <clears throat> to take it from there. With that, I'm sure that knowing Ken, he will um, bring this up during public comment at the end of the meeting and we look forward to hearing what you have to say on the matter but um, that's where we're at right now. Kim. May I add something? <laughs> sure. 
Yeah, um, and just as the board's attorney, I will just add that we wouldn't be able to interfere in the contractual relationships between employees and the hospital anyway. So um, capping salaries wouldn't be something the board does. And also, in somewhat contrast to it being a symbolic um, move, the information requested in the guidance this year that the um, hospital budget team asked for and has received and is reviewing with the board, um, that information can be used to be considered in decision making, but it, it can't be used to specifically change salaries um, or do the type of line by line changes that it appears are requested. And um, it, it is information for the board when they're looking at their overall um, charge to adjust expenses, costs, however, um, NPR, um, and as they go through the process. So I just wanted to add that. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda are the minutes of Wednesday, August 8th. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of Wednesday, August 8th without any additions, deletions, or corrections? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I would abstain, because I was absent. Let the record note that Robin Lunch has abstained because of her absence. Okay, at this point, we're gonna turn it over to Pat Jones and the hospital budget team. Another set of Whenever you're ready, Pat, take it away. Thank you. Good afternoon. For the record, my name is Pat Jones. I'm the Health System Finances Director for the Green Mountain Care Board. I'm joined, joined here by Lori Perry and by Kelly Thoreau, um, very able members of the hospital budget team and health system finances team. Um, this um, basically kicks off the uh, decision-making phase of the hospital budget process. So today, um, what we want to do is, first of all, just do it right now, review the next steps in the process. Um, we um, today are looking for you to begin um, a hospital by hospital review and um, develop some preliminary decisions. And the reason I call them preliminary is because we are still in an open public comment period. That public comment period closes on September 10th. Um, the board has a deadline of making final decisions on the 14 hospitals' budgets by September 14th. Our statutory deadline is the 15th, that's a Saturday. And uh, similarly, um, written orders to the hospitals are required to be um, transmitted by September 30th, again, a weekend. So in this case, we'll be looking at um, getting the orders out on September 28th. The next thing I'll do um, is just show a, um, a slide that um, outlines sort of a system-wide summary on some key <coughs> metrics that you look at in your decision making. And then um, we'll begin our hospital-specific um, uh, recommendations from the staff and your review and discussion. Um, as I think everyone knows this is my first year in this role. Um, when I looked back at the past couple of years, what I noticed was that um, staff came in first with um, recommendations on which hospitals' budgets should be approved as submitted or could be approved as submitted. Um, and that seemed to make sense to me, so I decided to take the same approach here, which is really um, starting with those hospitals that um, may be um, less complex and where um, budgets might be approved close to as submitted or as submitted. And then 
Um, probably that will take us through today with maybe a high level overview of the remaining hospitals, but we're really thinking that next week will um, be the opportunity to take a deeper dive um, into those hospitals with um, a more complex budget picture. So assuming that that works for you all, that's the approach that we'll, um, that we'll take today. So um, this is the system um, summary. You've all seen variations of this document before. Um, it shows all of the hospitals. We've um, put what we see as some of the key high-level metrics, including the dollar amount of the hospital's fiscal year 19 budget as submitted, the change um, from fiscal year 18 budget to fiscal year 19 budget, shown as a percentage growth rate, um, the change between fiscal year 18 projections um, to fiscal year 19 budget, again showing a percent growth, the percentage growth in rate submitted by the hospital, the operating margin, that's also a percentage, the total margin, and the day's cash on hand. Um, and these metrics will be shown later in the slide deck for each hospital, but this is a way to have a um, complete system look. Just a couple of um, points. You'll notice that for Rutland Regional Medical Center, um, for both the MPR budget to budget growth and the rate requests, there are two figures. Um, board members will recall that when R Rutland presented, they indicated that because of um, some change um, in ACO fees that they were um, reducing their budget to budget growth requests from 3.2 to 3.1% and similarly reducing their rate requests from a 3% increase to a 2.6% increase. Um, some of the figures uh, for the totals I'll just um, just mention. The total system-wide budget-to-budget MPR growth um, comes out to 2.9 percent for the budgets as submitted. Um, when you look at the fiscal year 18 projection to 19 budget, that growth rate is 3.2 percent. And um, the rate request um, is um, uh, the weighted average of the hospital's weight rate request is coming in at a 3.1 percent increase. So um, I'll start with Grace Cottage, um, and this would be one of the hospitals that um, the um, staff is recommending um, approval as submitted. This data you saw um, in similar fashion last week, and we'll show it for all of the hospitals. It gives you their base budget, their fiscal year 19 proposed budget. One thing we added, um, because we thought it might be helpful for context, is the percentage of the system total in submitted 19 budget that is represented by this particular hospital. So you can see for Grace Cottage that that, um, that, that sort of system impact is 0.7 percent. Um, you know, we then have the NPR growth rate, what's happening in health care reform investments. In this case, Grace Cottage um, requested no dollars for health care reform investments. And then the um, night fiscal year 19 rate request. And an important metric is what does 1% of rate increase represent in terms of dollars? So you saw this last year for, or last week for, um, it felt like last year, for um, all of the hospitals. And this is, um, this is just a recap of that. Um, in terms of hopefully aiding you in your decision making, what we've done is um, put together a, a table, some financial indicators for each hospital, and then a table with uh, the staff recommendation on um, a variety of factors. In this case, there are only two, NPR growth rate and rate increase. The financial indicators um, you'll see up top include the um, fiscal year 19 budget 
budget um, projected operating margin. In Grace Cottage's case, it's 0.7%. Uh, and also the dollar amount represented by that. Where applicable, we will note if the hospital is projecting an operating loss in fiscal year 18. So as you can see, Grace Cottage is in fact projecting that they will have an operating loss. The board, um, I believe it was board member Yusufer who suggested that we um, add total margin as well. So that metric is there um, for the fiscal year 19 budget. Uh, days cash on hand. And then also um, the, the change in the fiscal year 18 projected to fiscal year 19 budget. NPR growth. So you can see that for Grace Cottage, um, their uh, NPR growth rate budget to budget is 3.5%. Their projected to budget is actually 5.6%. And their um, commercial rate increase, um, and in fact, rate increase across all payers is um, they requested 3.2%. Just a word about these two measures, which are the items that you um, make decisions on. Um, our hospital budget guidance does set a target for MPR um, growth. So for fiscal year 19, the target was 2.8% growth. And then hospitals that requested an allowance for health care reform investments were um, permitted um, potentially up to 0.4% additional for health care reform investments. So if a hospital use that entire allowance, their, um, the target for their NPR growth rate would be 3.2%. And then when we talk about the rate, um, that the, the budget guidance doesn't include um, a target for rate increase. Um, and I just want to be clear about what we mean by rate increase. What it really means is the um, percent growth in charges um, for the hospital over the prior year. Um, and most of the hospitals, it's the same across all payers. It's not necessarily the same across all services. So you'll see in the budget narrative that a number of the hospitals have a zero percent. Their overall rate increase in this case, for example, might be 3.2 percent. Um, but they have um, varying rates depending on the type of service. So often physician services are um, proposed for level in terms of the charges, whereas some of the other services might have a higher rate than the overall rate. So just a note about what rates are and aren't. It doesn't mean it's what the hospital's going to get. In fact, um, you know, there are, the hospitals make assumptions about, um, about whether they'll get um, that for Medicaid and Medicare generally. <laughs> they assume they won't, um, um, but um, it, it is a, a ball park in terms of what will happen with their charges. So in the, in the case of Grace Cottage, um, we are recommending um, that you accept the MPR growth rate of 3.5%. Um, part of the reason for that is that um, Grace Cudge is showing a near zero operating margin for fiscal year 19. Um, and they've also recently hired some providers, including primary care providers. And you'll remember that um, improving access to primary care is one of the goals of uh, Vermont's Hall Parish model. And then we're also recommending um, that the commercial um, rate increase of 3.2 percent um, be um, also accepted. The, um, the Vermont Department of Health um, on their hospital report card website um, does have some information on charges. I again want to emphasize that it's charges, not prices. And um, Grace Cottage showed um, that charges, they, they don't have enough services to show charges 
charges for inpatient or outpatient care, um, but for physician services, their um, charges appear to be near or below the average from, uh, from the BDH website. The data is a couple years old, but just um, to give you a little context. So I'll stop there um, and see if the board wants to have any discussion on Grace Cottage. So um, before we get started, I just want to say that, um, again, these are staff recommendations. The board will have to deliberate, which we are about to commence, um, on those proposals. But I wanted to say that uh, the public comment period is open until September 10th. So even though um, it may appear that some decisions may be made today, those will be subject to um, either a ratifying uh, or some type of uh, more permanent vote um, next week. So that um, I know that Jess wants to talk about um, tying it in. So maybe I'll refer to her for the minute and then come back to the rest of my comments. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I just wanted to say, Pat and team, that one of the things that I think we have to make sure that if we make some preliminary straw decisions today, you know, we are going to wait for the public comment period, obviously, to end in case there's some public comment that changes our minds. But the other piece that I want to make sure is that as a system, we look at all of the individual decisions that we've made along the way, and we line that up with the QHP and, you know, the filings that we had and the unit cost increases that we uh, basically imposed effectively um, uh, on the carriers just to make sure that we're in alignment. So I want to be able to uh, see the entire system at individual decisions all in one before we make any kind of final decisions. I think that would be helpful. So I just wanted to say that. So the other thing I wanted to um, mention before we start, Pat, is that um, in order to try to expedite that decision, decision confirmation next week, if a member of your team could um, keep a list of all decisions made today, and I think it might be easier for the motion next week to be um, to ratify um, the tentative decisions um, except for, and then get into it. Now, maybe there's so many exceptions that it doesn't make any sense next week, but let's try to use that framework to uh, save some time. So with that, I'll open it up to the board for discussion on uh, Grace Cottage. May, may I just suggest that maybe today we have the discussion and just don't take the votes at all and run through them next week, if that would be... I'm just worried about the time. I'd prefer to try to get some tentative decisions in place. Okay, I, yeah, I think we can see who's in agreement and what yep. issues remain, and, and I was thinking maybe we could just run down the hospital next week with the vote. Some will go very quickly. Hopefully. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so board members, Grace Cottage. Um, sure. Looking at the recommendation that the staff has put, I, th I think it is reasonable because of the struggles that they've been going through on the bottom line and trying to get some um, new hires. And, you know, when we look at the overage here of 3.5 versus a 2.8, it's very small. It's $88,000. Um, you know, this overall is a small hospital. It's not going to move the needle for making changes. And, you know, I, I do think um, your recommendations are reasonable. So I'll jump in, too, in that um, I think the recommendations are very reasonable. However, in order for it to be consistent with what I may have to say on all the other hospitals, um, I had knocked this down to a 2.9% commercial rate in my notes. <clears throat> my sense is that uh, um, I could accept the staff recommendation on this one. Um, as I look at the spending side of their budget, uh, going back to 2015, their growth rate has been less than 3% on the expenditure side. Um, and it looks that they're trying to uh, um, you know, restore some uh, bottom line issues having to do with total margin. Uh, margin. And uh, I would support that. So um, um, there wasn't anything, any um, issue here uh, that I felt would uh, ne necessitate any major change in recommendation. Do you want to go, Jeff, sir? Go um, either way. Um, I'm also fine with the staff recommendation. I, I 
like your idea, Kevin, of knocking down the commercial rate, but I'm a little worried because of their previous financial problems. So that would be my hesitation, I think, there. And I would just say it was kind of like a, to use Mr. Liebertoff's word, a symbolic move. Yeah. It was such a small knock, yeah. um, three-tenths of a percent on the commercial rate that I felt it uh, was sending the message that I hope we can convey overall so that it does fall in alignment with what we did on the uh, insurance rate decisions. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I, I, I can be content with the staff recommendation as well, but I, I feel similarly to you, Kevin, in that I think that some of these commercial rate increases are too high and to keep it in alignment. So I think depending upon how the rest of the board feels, since it's a small change, I could go either way quite frankly. So dropping a little bit to keep it in line with what I hope that we're going to do in some of the other uh, commercial rate requests. So as I ex expected, we're not going to have any real easy decisions, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> so was that clear as mud? Uh, I think so. Um, I think so. Okay. I think we have it. I, I mean, I took it as a tentative um, decision to um, go with the staff recommendations, but with some um, a couple of members wishing to see the rate lower. The commercial rate. Yeah, commercial rate. Yeah. Okay. Shall we move on? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going from smallest to largest among the hospitals that we think might be, um, you know, close to being approved as submitted. So um, in that order, the next one is Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center. Um, you'll note that under the second bullet, they represent 1.9% of the system total. Um, they have an MPR growth rate uh, of 5.2% over 18 budget and a um, 19 rate requests of a uh, 2.9% oh, 2 increase. The 1% rate increase is worth um, $489,000 for this hospital. So um, you can see their uh, financial indicators on this slide. They are actually budgeting for a, an operating margin of zero. Um, and their total margin um, comes in at 1.6% in their 19 budget. They have 176 days on cash on hand. Um, interestingly, you'll note that their 18 projection to 19 budget NPR growth is at 3.4%, which is um, pretty close to the target of 3.2%. Um, um, so they are, um, you know, they're a hospital that um, is, seems to be growing a bit beyond what was budgeted in 18. They did um, identify health care reform investments. So um, one decision that the board needs to make is whether to accept um, their health care reform investments at the 0.4% allowance. They actually um, identified uh, almost a million dollars worth of health care reform investments, but the 0.4% is 195000 um, staff recommends that you approve those health care reform investments. The MPR growth rate at 5.2 percent, we recognize that that is higher than the, than the target that was outlined in the guidance. Um, but we actually recommend um, that you accept this MPR growth as well. Um, some of the rationale for that is that, as you can see, um, as I point out earlier, their um, projected to budget, 18 projected to 19 budget is pretty close to um, the target. They have, you know, um, Mount Escutney um, has a very specific um, set of services that they offer. Um, they aren't trying to do a ton of different services. They've really focused on rehab and primary care. And, um, and they also have quite 
a bit of out-of-state business as well. They're getting um, referrals, particularly from Dartmouth, and they're now um, affiliated with Dartmouth. So, um, so we actually are recommending acceptance, even though that exceeds um, the, the target, and we are also um, recommending acceptance of what is one of the lower um, commercial rate increases at 2.9%. So I'll start it off just by saying that um, I understand what the uh, staff's recommendation is. This one is another one that um, I disagree with in that I didn't feel that we had sufficient data to see that the delta on the out-of-state business was what was driving the um, 5.2. If they could provide that to you before next week, I think I would be more sympathetic to that, uh, what I would consider a very large NPR growth rate. Um, and on the commercial rate here, I had it um, somewhere between 1.5 and 2% rather than 2.9. Maybe I'll jump in here. So one is I'm comfortable with the health reform investments. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that they put that in. Uh, seems like they're doing some great things there. The second piece I would say is I'm actually comfortable with the commercial rate increase feel more comfortable under 3% in general, so they're under there from my comfort level. The piece that I would say I agree with Kevin about is 5.2 um, is high. Uh, I, I believe that they had testified that about 30% of their business comes from out of state, if I remember correctly. So if there was a, you know, 30% of that NPR is still above our target. So if there was a, uh, if they could quantify how much of that growth is coming from out of state and we could then make an adjustment perhaps for that, an allowance for that, but I still think if it is in fact 30 percent, this is an NPR that might be a little bit still too high. So. But I would just add on to that. It really should be the delta of the change in out of state business. It shouldn't just be if they had if they had 25 percent of out of state business last year and it went up to 30, it should only really be that additional increase. wants to go next? You want to start, Robin? Sure. Uh, I'm sort of with Jess. I'm comfortable if the rate increase is under three. Um, so I'd be curious if you feel like sharing, Kevin, more about your thinking about how you got to that those percentages. Um, Basically, it was trying to get the uh, NPR down to a number that I thought was more realistic but still exceeded our guidance. Got it. That's interesting. Um, on, I, and I agree with both of you that the NPR is too high, and I'm also open to an adjustment based on out-of-state business. So I, I think I agree with where you guys are headed, um, although I would note that they are projecting a zero operating margin. So. I'm uh, looking at the long-term trends uh, for Mount Scutney and their NPR trend since 2015 has been 4%, which uh, is, uh, seems reasonable, um, and their spending trend has been 3.8%. Um, it looks like they are uh, trying to recover some total margin, um, and I think that that, that would be helpful. Um, one thing I worry about is looking at comparing their 2019 budget proposal to their 2018 uh, projection to where they are now, and then looking at the revenue, at the payer mix uh, that comprises um, them hitting uh, their target. And of the, the, the total target uh, in terms of the delta between 2018 projection and 2019 is 1.7 million. And they're looking at only 314,000 of that coming from commercial payers, and uh, 2.3 million coming from Medicaid payers, and over 4 million uh, coming from. Uh, um, uh, well, I, I'm sorry. It's a negative 2.3 million from Medicaid and a positive 4 million from Medicare, and then they're losing uh, $383,000 in dish. So I, I worry that this uh, payer mix. 
um, might not get them to where they want to go, but uh, that is their decision. The other thing that um, I think might be helpful to them is that if they uh, engage Dartmouth-Hitchcock in negotiating uh, with the co with uh, the commercial payers, uh, that was one thing that came out in the hearings that uh, they're still as a, as a small hospital on their own, but they are aligning themselves with Dartmouth-Hitchcock, and it might help if and I and I think they look down the road um, implied that they look down the road at working more closely with Dartmouth-Hitchcock, but. I think the sooner they get there, the better off they'll be. Okay, what I was scrambling for is the, um, they did put in their payer mix in one of their charts, and they showed in fiscal year 17, 26.5% came from New Hampshire. Their 18 July year to date was 25.8, and their uh, 19 budget was 26.1, so it seems to be staying flat or declining slightly. I mean, it's small dollars, but it, it's not going to... Um, I don't think it's going to contribute to the growth. It's about flat. Um, my take on this one was uh, one of the concerns I had about this hospital was um, the patients that they received from Dartmouth. The Dartmouth subsidy that they were supposed to receive in 2018, which was I think about 1.6 million, and because they became more profitable, they didn't get. They're not getting that subsidy, and they're not getting the subsidy going forward. Yet they did talk about the higher cost of care for some of those patients that were coming over from Dartmouth. So it's hard to quantify to what extent we may be subsidizing that, but I was looking at this one also at about a one and a half to two percent rate increase, and that would then bring their NPR growth down to you know three point nine to four point three. Um, and again, part of it, I think we need to put that really understand where that goes into the mix, and I don't think we completely um, have that wrapped up. So I, I would also be where Kevin was on reducing the commercial rate increase. Um, also, just because I don't want to sound like a broken record, um, I'm just going to go through kind of some of my thinkings overall on all the hospitals. Um, so first, I want to acknowledge the hard work all the hospitals have put into their budgets. The challenges are significant, with hospitals facing declining utilization, operating losses, and unpay unfavorable payer mix shifts. Also a flat to declining and aging population that present more, more complex care needs, opioid and mental health issues, uncertainty in federal programs like 340B, and the risk assumed with, with movement into a fixed prospective payment or an ACO also factors in. Vermont needs to prepare for these trends and uncertainties to continue. Hospitals need to make strategic decisions on what services are right for their demands. We need to make sure hospitals are financially viable and find ways to become more efficient and reduce waste across the system. I really like the mindset of one hospital, which was the challenge to match payment for the lower payers, Medicaid and Medicare, to be equal or higher than the costs incurred. Um, which would move us towards reimbursement by payer, including commercials, aligning. I find several hospitals are trying to solve their financial problems by raising commercial rates beyond inflationary rates and or higher NPR levels above our guidance. All hospitals spoke to cost savings through supply chain and opportunist, opportunistic staffing costs as ways they are filling the gap. But these programs need to be more robust to push more cost reductions. We need to do a lot more here. Where higher education or corporations face these challenges, they forego raises or they are selective and only increase hourly or lower salaried employees. Benefit plans are shared more by employees um, and what the business pays less. They set strategic plans for the future, and service lines are eliminated or added based on demand. The reason I'm talking about all this is because the specifics of these reductions or, or changes need to be led by the hospitals. I don't think we can dictate what gets done at a specific salary level. But the pushbacks that I know I'm going to be pushing on rates and NPR growth rates on hospitals, with specifically with declining utilization, they need to find additional ways of a path forward and strategies. This may mean they're going to incur losses early and they're going to have to utilize existing cash until they can right size their services and staff with the population needs. You know, I just feel like a lot of the hospitals are trying to solve their problems by putting in excessive rate increases. And we're sitting here saying, well, they're having operating losses. Well, that's true. 
but they need to change their expense levels. And I've been preaching this for a long time, and you know, I think for, since last year going through this, and I think that's one of the things I'm going to push back on on all these hospitals. Some of the hospitals that have higher increases for 2018, like a hospital like this, they're coming in strong for 2018 over guidance. They should be giving some of that back as well in, in rate reductions. So I just wanted to put that out there because that's where I'm going to be coming from when I push back. I understand a lot of these hospitals are struggling financially, but that's not going to change unless they change the service mix or become more efficient or reduce waste. It can't be fixed by just continuing to increase rates year after year or in many cases, we're going to see hospitals asking for what I see as unrealistic NPR growths when you look at their year over year. They're declining this year, and then they're asking for a 6% you know, over the prior year. So I just kind of wanted to lay that out there, because on most of these hospitals, I will be pushing back you know, on their rate increases. So I'm not sure if you have any clue where we're at on that map. Can I make a suggestion? I would say, what about running this one with the lower rate increase, which and the and the accordingly lower NPR as of, and for next week, and then we can see how that impacts system wide. I think the one thing we did decide is everybody accepted the health care reform investment. Yes. And to okay. the extent that if Scott May can give you any information on out-of-state Delta. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the next one is Gifford Medical Center. Um, they are 2.1% of the system total. Um, they're the only hospital that's um, requesting a negative um, MPR growth rate at minus 6.1%. Their rate, um, they did um, request health care reform investments, but um, because they're below that 2.8% target, um, it wouldn't really be necessary to approve those. Um, the, uh, the fiscal year 19 rate increase is requested at 4%, and, and the estimated value of a 1% rate increase is just over $400,000. So um, Gifford is uh, projecting for the 19 budget an operating margin of 2.5% if it is um, accepted. They are um, projecting an operating loss for fiscal year 18. Their uh, total margin is higher at 3.9 percent. Um, they are also projecting a deficit in the total margin for fiscal year 18. Days cash on hand, 177.5. Their um, 18 projected to 19 budget MPR growth is 9.8%. Um, they, as I said, they did identify, um, particularly in the health IT area, healthcare reform investments. Um, we're not making a recommendation on that because they're below the 2.8% cap. Um, the NPR growth rate, um, you know, it's a little optimistic given where they have been recently, but um, they have hired um, two surgeons to replace two who left and two family practitioners. They also had an EMR implementation, and so productivity was down while that implementation was occurring, and they're anticipating a um, productivity increase. And they are also um, expecting a slight um, favorable um, payer shift from Medicaid and Medicare to commercial, which um, would bring their revenues up a bit. So the staff is recommending um, accepting the, um, the minus 6.1% NPR. In terms of their rate increase, um, 
We're actually recommending a 1% decrease from 4% to 3%. Um, when you look at the VDH website that um, I mentioned earlier, um, and again, these are charges. Um, I want to make sure we um, have the caveats out there, but their charges um, are, appear higher than average on the VDH website for inpatient, outpatient, and physicians services so um, um, we are thinking that slowing down that rate increase um, makes sense if you so a one, again that would be a, a decline of um, just over four hundred thousand um, dollars you know that's a good chunk of their operating margin but um, if they were able to make some expense reductions as well it wouldn't um, you know have that as big of an impact so thank you, Pat. I think uh, that was important to uh, point out um, what we show as their uh, charge master from VDH and that we don't really truly have the true picture, but we have no reason to believe that um, Gifford is being reimbursed significantly less than um, other institutions in the state. So it would lead one to believe that they are at the high end of rates currently, and um, that makes that 4% uh, a very tough one. Um, so I, I, I actually could live with the staff recommendation of the 3%. Um, my gut would have me go lower, and, and so would my brain, except that, um, again, we're dealing with an institution that I think uh, has to make significant changes in order to uh, have a good long-term mission. So with that, who else wants to jump in? I'll jump in a little bit on the, on the pr pricing. Um, so I actually did look back at that VDH website, and some of this is where the 4% is, is too high for me. Um, not only is there, are there pricing, and I understand gross charges, it's not what the actual you know, price might be, but I'm just going to give some examples for the other board members who may not have looked into this. A hip and knee replacement at the state average is 43,000. Gifford charges 62,000 gross charge. A C-section state average is 16,000. Gifford charges 26,000. A broken wrist at 14,000. Gifford's gross charge is 31,000. Hysterectomy 21,000. Gifford's gross charge is 46,000. So for me, some of these very identifiable, common, frequent procedures are well, well, well above the state average. So a 4% commercial rate ask is seems really high and troubling to me. Um, also, when you look at their total cost of care from the blueprint, they're already an outlier in uh, expenditures in total cost of care, so on the high side. So for me, I really feel strongly that we need to lower that commercial rate ask because I can't justify increasing these rates even higher on charges that are already outliers um, up there. So, and you know, their day's cash on hand are above the state average. I, I see their projected deficits and their operating losses, and I, I do agree with you, Kevin, and to your, to your point, Maureen, as well, you know, we can't change, uh, I, I feel like we can't throw good money after bad. And so to the extent that we need to think about what is the business model here, what is the services that should be provided, how can we right these ships, um, it can't always be through a commercial rate ask, particularly when those commercial rates are already high. Um, yeah, I, I agree with the comments, and you know, I'm going to read some numbers from their history because this is a similar discussion that we had last year, but um, in their 2018 budget, they had a $60 million NPR and $59 million of expenses, and they were supposed to make about $1.3 million. In their projection now, their NPR is, or their operating revenue, is $52 million, so down about $8 million. Their expenses are 58.2 million, so down only 800,000. And you know, this is an example of showing how it's really difficult to be able to respond to lowering NPR and and actually are actually having too high of an expectation. Um, so they're projecting a loss of 6.2 million dollars this year. So if they don't make some fundamental changes to the way they're running the hospital. Um, they're not going to be able to sustain these losses year after year. 
And so I was concerned last year when they came in with this request um, because in 2017 their budget had been 58 million. Remember we go off budget so they went from 58 to 59. But they really came in at 54 million on NPR. So, you know, I'm afraid they're doing the same thing again. They've justified that they've hired some surgeons and it's going to come back. But we're going to really have to watch what happens here because if they don't get that top line that they're projecting and they have hold their expenses, which aren't easy to make a quick shift, we're going to see another big loss again. Um, so it's tough. I mean, you know, reducing their rate to 3%, as you've suggested, it's about $400,000. Um, I think we should reduce rate because, you know, we can't just keep increasing to try to make it work. But even that change of $400,000 is not going to be enough for them to really make the change they're going to need to on the bottom line. So I'm just concerned that their growth rate from where their forecast is now at 52 million going up to 57 million, which is a 9.8% increase over where they're trending this year, is again too optimistic. Um, you know, their NPR growth at minus 6.1 is, is certainly within guidance. I'm not saying, you know, we can bring it down that much, but I just want to, you know, caution, and I did when we had the meetings with them, that if, in fact, they don't get that top line, they're going to have their expense base targeted to that, and they're just going to continue this situation where they're losing more and more. So, you know, I support the staff decision, um, but I, I just caution that this hospital is, is struggling financially deeply, and even these modest changes, either way, is, is not going to be that much of an impact. Um. I have to agree uh, completely with, with Maureen. Um, this is, it looks like a problem here that goes back to 2015 at least. That's as far back as our data go, goes, where they have been <clears throat> trending on NPR at a negative 2% and uh, expenses at 1.7%. And again, if you look at these uh, dramatic swings between 2017 and uh, 2018 budget and 2018 projected, um, you know, for, for where they are now, 2018 projected, they're looking at almost a $5.5 million increase in NPR. As Maureen said, that's 9.8 percent up, up on the revenue side. And they're looking at a $2.9 million a reduction in expenses, which is 5 percent. So, you know, they're looking down the road and they're saying we've got to raise our revenues by 9.8 percent and reduce our, our expenses by 5 percent, and uh, that is a, a heavy lift. And I, so it's, it seems to me there are some structural problems here that uh, really need to be addressed and uh, that um, wishful thinking by getting even a higher level of NPR doesn't matter if they, if, if they can't make the target then um, why, why give them that target uh, uh, to try to reach? I agree with what everyone says. Um, I, and I can certainly live with the staff recommendation of three. I think I would also go lower. And that's in part um, because of some of what you were saying, Maureen, a, about a wake-up call, really. Um, part of what is happening in with this particular hospital is they are, they do have a transfer of dollars to the FQHC and they have not begun participating in any of the ACO programs in part I think because probably their primary care folks aren't interested, which I'm sympathetic to except in this case the primary care and the hospital are very closely linked and the hospital appears to be helping to support the primary care. So um, I would actually go lower than three if other people had appetite. Uh, yeah, and I would just add, actually, I, I had written down two. And I, I think if we look at their history, you know, this has been a hospital we have not adjusted in the past. 2015, they asked for 5.6 in rate, they got 5.6. 2016, they asked for 5.8, they got 5.8. 2017, 3.9, 3.9. 2018, 4 and 4. You know, so I, I don't know, you know, we need to, to be sending a message. We can't just every year be having higher increases for between 4 to 6 percent for the past four years, showing significant losses and running at this higher expense. So I had actually put in 2 percent for my recommendation. Um, I could go with the 3 percent as well, but I agree. 
And I should just say, like, if part of my thinking is not necessarily that they have to join the ACO, but they have to do something differently. So if they don't want to join the ACO, that's fine, but then they need to articulate what they're doing to change their business model. Because driving, you know, this business model doesn't seem to be working very well for them or the state as a whole. And I would accept two as well, if there's anyone else who wants to go lower. So I did not, at least, and maybe they said it and I just didn't hear it, but Tom and Jess, I'm not sure I heard what you were thinking of for a commercial rate number. Well, <clears throat> I don't think I'd, I, I have resolved that in my mind. I, I think I could uh, go lower because I think it is um, on paper affording them, re them revenue that they're not going to earn anyhow. Um, so on paper affording them revenue, it they would be offering them revenue uh, uh, that uh, is difficult, uh, that is a very low probability of them achieving anyhow. And uh, I think it would be helpful to uh, reduce the parameters of their revenue expectations to something that are more reasonable. I would be comfortable with a 2% as well. So I, I think I heard three members say two. Pat? Yep. Nobody seemed to uh, object to the NPR, although I think everyone was skeptical that even the minus 6.1 would be reached. Um, and it's safe. Yeah, that's why it I went yeah, it back to the prior slide. Each 1% decrease in the rate um, is, you know, projected to have a, an impact of uh, just over 400,000. So um, assuming that that holds, it would, in fact, impact their NPR. These decisions are obviously interrelated. Okay. Okay. Uh, North Country Hospital is the next one. Um, they um, are proposing a fiscal year 19 budget of um, almost 82 million. They represent 3.2% of the system total. Their NPR growth is 3.1%. Um, um, they did um, request health care reform investments, so um, they would, in fact, be under the target if you accept their health care reform investments of 3.2 percent. Um, North Country um, is participating in the Medicaid ACO program this year, and we um, have heard nothing to indicate that they won't continue to do, do so, at least in that program um, for 19. Their fiscal year 19 rate request is 3.6 percent, and um, um, the estimated value of one percentage point rate increase is 649,000. Um, we so so North Country's operating margin is um, pretty low. It's at 1.1 percent. Their total margin is 2.8. Um, their days cash on hand. Um, 196.3, and their um, 18 projected to 19 budgeted NPR growth is at 5.5 percent. Um, we're recommending accepting both the um, growth rate for NPR and the commercial rate increase. Um, they, uh, you know, the, the, some of the rationale for that is that they really are a hospital that has. Um, challenging social determinants, demographics, payer mix, and so forth. And they're, um, you know, they're, they're pretty isolated up there in the Northeast Kingdom in terms of other hospitals being nearby. They have also um, re just recently hired two surgeons to replace two who had left. Um, and they have a, um, you know, a pretty low operating margin. 
Oh, and in terms of the health care reform investments, you all had um, made a preliminary decision last week to accept up to 0.3 percent of their health care reform investments um, since they have a, a NPR growth rate that is under the 3.2 percent target if you assume a 2.8 percent base plus the 0.3 that gets you to the 3.1 okay who would lead it off on North Country <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Maybe I'll go first and get it over with. Um, I, uh, um, you know, again, I, I, I take a look at the longer term trends just to make sure that uh, uh, there's not a consistent uh, negative pattern, but that, but sometimes hospitals hit bumps in the road and uh, a current year situation doesn't necessarily uh, profile um, a long term trend. So. Uh, North Country, from a, an NPR point of view, going back to 2015, has grown um, at about 1.8 percent, and their expense has grown at about 1.8 percent, um, which seems uh, uh, pretty much that, that, that they're toeing the line. Um, uh, get, give, you know, um, you know, from, from a, an economic point of view, um, the thing I worry about is, is maybe a kind of a mini version of what we saw in a previous hospital where they are kind of falling behind in 2018 um, so that their uh, 2019 target uh, from an NPR point of view is 5.5 percent above their 2018 projected and their 2019 expenses are 4.6 4.6 million or 5.7 percent over their 2018 projection which again is a stretch, but um, um, I think that they've been, you know, working hard to uh, stay, uh, um, to, you know, to uh, not be extravagant by any means. Um, I do note that they have the lowest population determinants of, of any hospital uh, uh, in the state, and uh, so I would uh, um, pr pretty much uh, follow their lead on this one and. Um, um, you know, accept their 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 proposal. Uh, I I would just propose um, maybe a slight reduction in their rate increase. Um, this is another hospital that has had a history of pretty high rate increases, um, which we have not changed in the past. So in 2015, they had an 8.3 and they received 8.3, 16 to 4.8, 17 to 3.5, 18 to 5. Um, so the, this 3.6 is, is below the trend that they've typically asked for, so I appreciate that. Um, I think the fact that they, you know, do participate within the ACO, um, you know, so I, I had put down between a 2.6 and a 3.0 um, rate change, um, just, you know, based on their history of high rate increases. Um, they do have a low operating margin, though, as well. So on this one, I agree with uh, Maureen's uh, logic. I just hadn't gone quite that far. I'd, I had considered a half a percent cut, which would bring it down to 3.1. But I certainly could live with the 3.0 that Maureen was the high end of your range. Um, well, I'm pretty much right there, too. I thought, you know, uh, given their day's cash on hand and given their recent rate requests over the past few years, um, and also looking at the charge master, which I agree is just one proxy and it's not the be all end all, but they tend to be above the state average in many of their gross charges. So, and I think that's the accumulation of, to some degree, some of these rate requests over the years. So, I could be comfortable with 3.1, 3, somewhere in that range. You got your wish. You got to go last, Robin. Thank you. <laughs> Which means next time you go yes, first. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> I can probably do that. Um, I, I could really go either way on this one. I think um, I'm fine. I, there's already three members who are interested in the rate decrease anyway, so it doesn't really matter what I think. But um, 
It always I, matters what you think. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that with a country, one, I am sympathetic to North Country because of their demographics, and which means that they don't have a lot of place to go except the commercial rate increase. Uh, I'm also sympathetic to them because they are, they did indicate they're moving to participate in all three ACO programs and they talked about some of the ways they're looking to do some operational changes. Um, so that makes me, that, so that's why I wasn't particularly sure where I wanted to land, quite frankly, on the rate increase. Um, the other thing is I don't feel like I t entirely understand yet, and it's, I think, because of the way our process works, how um, the ACO decisions that we'll make in December then will come back to impact on the NPR growth rate in particular. It shouldn't necessarily impact the growth in charges, since that would apply to the fee-for-service revenue. But um, I think that's an area that I don't think we'll understand this year, but for next year will be a bigger issue as we grow and scale. So that was a long way of saying I'm sort of on the fence with North Country, but I can go with the flow. Tom. I just want to add, I, I fully agree with Maureen that their history of rate increases um, is high. It's uh, um, a, on average a 5.4 percent rate increase. Um, but um, I note that their actual trend in NPR is 1.8 percent over that same period. And what I worry about with North Country is that they have a, they are heavily dependent on Medicaid. And so for them in 2019 to achieve their target over 2018 um, projected, which are the, the, the two best numbers that we have, they, they are looking for a 13 percent increase in, 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 in their me Medicaid revenues. And um, I, I just, I, I worry that that's not going to happen. And um, it, it's, it's going to um, be harmful to a hospital that is in, as uh, Robin said, is as kind of not the best demographics um, among, all, uh, among all the hospitals. Yeah, I would just also point out that, you know, on their expenses, they've been holding their expenses around 84 million from 16, it was 83.8, 17, it was 84.2, 18, budget was 84.3. They're actually saying their 18 projection is going to be 82, so that, that's all really solid. Their 19 budget, they're going up to 86.6, and part of that was their investing, uh, I think about $2 million, $1.9 million in Athena, in a... Um, information systems program, but they need to find cost offsets in order to do some of that. So, I mean, I think they have a really significant jump in expenses year over year as well, and that's, you know, being offset some by this increase. So, I guess, you know, we can debate whether we should uh, reduce them or not, but, um, you know, it's not significant reduction, I think, what we're talking about to go to a three. Um, but does start to send a message that they need to be addressing the whole mix of their P&L. So it sounds like the board is narrowly headed towards a 3% commercial rate. Subject to change, obviously. Yeah, I just wanted to point out in terms of the expenses, and I'm going to um, look to my friends to the left and right here. Um, I think this may be one of the hospitals that was um, changing from um, a, an EMR system not cloud-based to cloud-based, and that does change their expense picture. I'm not sure if that factors in or not, but um, I just wanted to point that out. It does. It was about $2 million, and before it would have been in, um, to, we should be seeing an offsetting depreciation reduction, which we're not seeing significantly from if it was a capitalized cost before. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Southwestern, um, this may um, fall into the more complex realm. I'll let you all decide. Um, it's obviously a larger 
hospital. We're now getting into a hospital that um, contributes to the system to the tune of 6.3 percent. Um, they're they they they've actually proposed an adjustment, um, which we discussed last week, and which you all tentatively um, decided to accept. So their NPR growth with the with the proposed adjustment, um, it's actually a dental home that was approved in a CON um, after last year's budget. Um, so their their NPR growth would be 3.2 percent if we accept their health care reform investments. That would be right at the target. Um, they are participating in the Medicaid ACO program in 18, and you know while we don't have definite information on 19, no reason to believe that they won't um, continue to participate with the ACO. Their fiscal year 19 rate request is 3.2. 2% and the estimated value of a 1% rate increase is just over 811,000. You can see their financial indicators. They're, um, they, you know, they're projecting some uh, pretty healthy margins there. Their um, their uh, operating margin at 3.6%. Um, their total margin at 4%. Their day's cash on hand is 46.3, but when you include their parent, um, it's, it's um, 180 to 189 um, days, depending on how they um, decide to fund a pension. And then um, their uh, fiscal year 18 projected to 19 budget, NPR growth is 3.7. Um, so that adjustment um, to the fiscal year 18 base, um, it's a CON that has been approved, and so the staff recommends that you accept that. Um, healthcare reform investments, they provided information on um, far more than needed for the 0.4% allowance. We recommend that you accept um, the 0.4% allowance. The NPR growth rate, um, again, is at the target um, and um, with when we uh, consider the adjustment, and so we recommend acceptance of that. The commercial rate increase um, comes in at 3.2%. Um, You'll um, start to see as the hospitals get more complex that we um, sort of lay out options. And so the options here are to accept that or to consider uh, reducing to 3% or less. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go out on the limb here and say that um, I um, believe that um, they could handle a, a slight reduction. Um, they have strong margins. They do, uh, it is important to note that they have greater out of state revenue than most of the hospitals given their location, but um, could withstand, in our opinion, a um, slight rate reduction. I'll go first. <laughs> go ahead, Robin. Um, I, as Pat said, I think to me, so I, I think we discussed this last time, but I actually could be wrong, but I had asked the question about the CON and the condition in the CON, and staff did go back and look at that, and we did approve uh, the dental home with the understanding that it would increase NPR. So to me, that's kind of just being consistent with what we've already decided and less of a real decision. Um, on the healthcare reform investments, I would accept the 0.4, but I would explicitly say that we don't accept the million in what I would call kind of IT prep uh, to be able to move to different um, EMR. Uh, and, but they don't need that million, quite frankly, to reach the 0.4 in healthcare reform investments. So uh, it doesn't really matter for the 0.4. I just wanted to be explicit about that one investment. Um, and on the commercial rate, I would go with the reduction. Um, and I, I don't have a number in mind, so I would be interested in what other people are, are have in mind, but I'm certainly fine with the three. Anybody want 
volunteer. Uh, now, we're, now we're going going down the line, and maybe um, I, I could support a, a modest uh, rate reduction as well as Robin indicated. Um, uh, Southwest has uh, had a pretty steady trend over the last four or five years of three and a half percent increase uh, in NPR and uh, five point four percent increase a year in in expenses. Um, they have uh, a pretty good bottom line. They're anticipating a four percent at a total margin. But I uh, again, I hear I worry about uh, the payer mix. Uh, to get from where they are now um, in 2018 uh, um, projected uh, to 2019, they'd be looking for a little under six million dollars on additional revenue. And as you look at their um, allocations of that to commercial, Medicaid, and Medicare, 76% um, of it is coming from commercial. 23% um, uh, from Medicaid and only one half of 1% uh, from Medicare, yet Medicare makes up, uh, in terms of their overall uh, NPR, 37%. So I'm, I'm not quite sure how this all fits together, but it seems to me that uh, they're healthy enough to take a minor um, a rate cut. Um. First, I think this is their P and L is strong, and they seem to be um, well managed each year. They're making about six million um, in their operating income. When I look at their commercial rate increase, um, I had them going to a two percent, and my logic there was they have about seventy percent. They have they have about thirty percent of their charges. I think it was for medical supplies and some of the physician professional services at zero, and the rest was at 5%. So basically they're showing a 5% increase across um, some of the, the inpatient, outpatient, et cetera. If I knock that down to 3% on those, that would bring their commercial rate increase overall down to two. So I blended them to a two, I put them down to a 2%, and that would assume again that they got 3% on most of their services, and the ones that they were holding at zero still hold at zero, um, because I just felt the 5% um, is really what they're reflecting across 70% of their line. I'm okay with their NPR and with the rest of their P&L. They also have seen some increase um, year over year in expenses um, because they are putting in a million dollars of that prep cost for um, potentially going to Epic. And you know, one pr the, the savings we would get potentially on the um, commercial rate increase if we went down, I think, is about 800,000. It was about 400,000 per point. So there's 800,000 there. I'm not saying that's why, but in, in a way, you know, we're commercial payers. You could look at it as a trade-off or paying for that, um, that specific line item. So I think they do a good job managing their P&L. They're going to need to get some additional cost savings if they want to stay at the profit. Um, and I would recommend a 2%. So I, I have to uh, say up front that I'm not prepared to um, offer what I think the commercial rate should be at this point in time. I'm waiting for the transcript of that hearing to come back. There were a few statements that um, I felt didn't reconcile with information that uh, I had, and I just want to reconcile that. Um, this is a, a very well-run hospital. I've been very impressed with everything they've done down there, but um, I'm not prepared at this point to accept the 3.2% uh, commercial rate increase, and if I'm not willing to accept that, then it probably would lower the NPR. But. Um, I, I just need to do some further research on my end before I'm prepared to even discuss Southwestern. Double mic here. Sorry. No, that's okay. Double mic. Um, no, I, I don't have an exact number, but I would I um, I agree with some of my colleagues here, and I think this hospital could afford a shaving of that commercial rate increase. I don't have the exact number, but somewhere between two and three percent makes sense to me. So. I'll give it more thought. 
So as I was afraid of, we're not making as good of decision-making progress as we had hoped, but let's keep going, Pat. Yeah, no, I think it's going okay. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I believe um, there is a tentative decision to accept their um, adjustment, accept their health care reform investment, and accept the NPR. Except the NPR would be adjusted that's by right. a rate yeah. change. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. I think uh, Rob, um, just, just on that point, um, we may need to discuss with some of the hospitals whether or not, you know, truly, yes, if you just reduce rate, that's going to go to NPR growth. Some of these hospitals may have been, you know, capping themselves to the 3.2 if they're not going to get the rate. You know, they're not that precise in all cases with um, with forecasting. You know, we see most of the hospitals don't come in right on the number. They they tend to, to sway one or two percent. So, um, I would be open for some of the hospitals that are under the cap if we take their commercial rate down, that they may still stay at the 3.2. I, I wouldn't always say it's going to go down. And, and it's more just because of the precision. Yeah, if one for one, if I take it out, it's, it's 800,000 and it drops to the bottom line. But they're not as precise in forecasting. Budgets are obsolete the day they're done, right? So things change. So I, I wouldn't necessarily hamstring them with that. That's just my point of view on that. You know, if they're under the 3.2, we take a commercial. If the hospital resubmit, you know, takes that commercial rate and still ends up at 3.2, you know, I, I think that sh could be acceptable. Point well taken, Marie. Can I just jump in on that point? I, to me, it would the determining factor on that for me is whether they're participating in the ACO because we know if they're participating in the ACO they're taking a fixed payment and that will have an impact on NPR growth obviously um, but it also means that they have a disincentive to drive volume whereas if they're 100 percent fee for service then, keep, then keeping the NPR growth just gives them the incentive to drive volume so I don't know how that plays out but I just want to say that out loud. And the only other thing I might add to that point is that um, when it comes time to look at their actuals, um, their 19 actuals, um, as you recall, we have the trigger for when hospitals are above or below by a certain amount. And, um, you know, just keep in mind that if they come in low, um, say they keep the same MPR, but then come in low, um, getting information on how much of that is related to the rate decrease would, I should think, be helpful to you all. So. Okay. Uh, the next hospital is um, Rutland Regional Medical Center. Um, they represent 9.9% of the system total. They're coming in with a proposed budget of about uh, $259 million. Uh, their MPR growth rate was, in their um, submission, 3.2%. Um, you probably recall that when they provided their presentation, and I mentioned this um, at the beginning, they um, revised that to a 3.1% MPR growth. And um, they are requesting um, the 0.4 percent in uh, health reform investments. They're not participating in ACO programs in 18, but all indications are that they plan to participate in the Medicaid um, program in 19. Um, their fiscal year 19 rate request was 3.0% um, with an estimated value of a 1% increase of $830,000. They have revised that request as well to downward to 2.6%. Um, the staff, uh, you know, they're, they, they, they're pretty healthy looking, um, a 2.3% operating margin in their submitted 19 budget, their total margin 4.4% days cash on hand, one of the stronger ones in the system at 205.7 days, and um, their 18 projected to 19 budget MPR growth is um, pretty low at 2.1%. Um, we are recommending um, accepting their health care reform investments, accepting their MPR growth rate, which 
if the investments are accepted is below um, the target that was in the guidance and accepting their commercial rate increase um, of 2.6 percent. So to change it up, Jess, I'm going to ask you to go first. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm actually happy with the staff recommendations. I thought that they did an excellent job with their presentation. I thought their reform investments were uh, right on the money, and I, you know, I appreciate that they're well under our guidance and under the th under three percent for the commercial rate ask. So. So on this one, um, I still look at the total cost of care for a hospital service area, knowing what the measurements that we have for the all payer model, and. It still concerns me, but on the flip side of that, I thought that uh, the presentation that they made in Castleton was probably one of the better presentations by any of the hospitals. And I also appreciate that over the years they have come in and willingly on their own um, lowered rates. So as much as I, I'm tending to want to cut commercial rate increases. I'm willing to accept uh, all three of the decision points there. Um, my recommendation would be a slight decline in rates to 2%. Um, you know, this is one when I look at their salaries and fringe, they're up $4.4 million, and that 0.6% is 500000 and. Um, you know, they're giving 3% across the board increases. Um, I'm not saying that's where they should cut, but I think there's some opportunity there to, to be more efficient. I do really appreciate that their original submission was a 3% and they came in at 2.6. Um, but again, I think there's some room there, uh, and I would recommend a 2%. I could uh, support a, a rate reduction here. Um, again, I haven't gone uh, into the weeds enough to figure out what specifically that recommendation would be. Um, but I, I, I do note that the hospital's long-term uh, spending trend uh, going back to 2015 has been 4.3% 4, 4 a year. Um, that they have year over year, unlike most other hospitals, had very good total margins of uh, in recent years of 4.4 percent projected, 3.1 percent, 5.3 percent, 7.5 percent, and 8.3 percent. Um, and so I think uh, that a, a rate cut uh, here is, um, is affordable. Um, one thing I do worry about, again, is looking at their 2018 projected budgets versus their 2019 projected budgets in terms of where their NPR comes from. And uh, that delta is a total of 5.3 million, um, and they're looking for six point, uh, a $6.9 million uh, increase in commercial offset to a degree by um, a $1 million reduction in Medicaid uh, receipts and a, another $900,000 uh, negative in dish receipts. So I, I, I worry again about their payer mix, um, but uh, um, they're closer to the ground than I am, and if they think this is you know, the, the appropriate distribution, I, I have no reason to argue with them. But overall, I, I would uh, support a, a, a rate cut here. of where Kevin was, I, I do, they are one of the areas with a higher total cost of care, I, but I also very much appreciate that they uh, have historically come in and offered rate cuts proactively, which is really what we would want them to do, which makes me inclined to be lenient <laughs> for whatever reason. But um, so I guess I'm a... I'm a little bit on the fence on the rate cut, but uh, so I, I'm a, I don't know yet. So Pat, what I think I heard is that uh, we're accepting the health care reform investments, we're accepting the uh, NPR, and we have a split board on the commercial rate. Yeah, and can I, I just want to point out the trend, and I know there's one year that's not on here where they did put further reductions, but in 15, they got an 8.4 percent increase, which was their ask. 16, 3.7, 17 minus 5.1, and that's because they had a pretty significant overage the year before. And I think they did a second 
uh, they may have done another reduction that year. Uh, last year they got a 4.9. So, you know, last year they were on the um, higher end. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay. Is there any additional information on Rutland the board needs from staff? I think Not. I just need to mull it over myself. Yeah. Yep. Understandable. Okay. So um, those were the hospitals that we would have categorized as um, less complex, um, <laughs> if there is such a thing. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I'll tell you that um, our thinking on the, on the remaining hospitals is a little um, less developed because of their complexity. Uh, and you guys are making great time, too. So um, what I was thinking is that we could walk through the remaining hospitals. We could point out um, you know, some, some of our thoughts and um, some notes about each hospital. You know, maybe take the board's temperature on each of them. If there are, um, you know, if, you, if, you, if there are things you can approve uh, tentatively, like health care reform investments, that would be great. If you want to um, dive in, we'll do our best to keep up with you. Um, but um, that was sort of, we were thinking of being a little more high level on these remaining hospitals, thinking that you might need some more time to uh, um, think about and, and address them. Does that make sense? Sense, Chair Mullen. To it does. Okay. So. Um, I thought the others were pretty difficult. So. What's that? I thought the ones we already discussed were pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He yeah. would really go. It's yeah. Like going from pre-calculus to calculus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, we'll start with Copley, um, which um, certainly um, is one of our more um, challenging decisions that we need to make. Uh, Copley came in um, with a proposed budget of 72 million. They represent 2.8 of the system total. Um, their NPR growth was the highest um, proposed at 5.9%. Um, they requested health care reform investments. They totaled 0.1% um, of their um, base NPR. So that would give them a target of 2.9% if they were to follow the guidance. So um, the difference between 2.9% and 5.9% for NPR growth. Um, they are not participating in ACO programs in 18. Um, you know, we've, we certainly heard from them that they're thinking about it for 19, but don't have um, definite um, information on that. Their fiscal year 19 rate request um, is also the highest requested of all the hospitals this year, and that's at 7.9%. Um, the estimated value of a 1% rate increase is um, 392000 So, um, they um, are projecting in 19 an operating margin of 2%. They're also projecting an operating loss for fiscal year 18. Um, in their 19 budget, the total margin is 2.5%. And again, they're projecting a deficit in fiscal year 18. Days cash on hand, um, is the lowest in the system. I mean, um, Southwestern's was lower, but they have the parent organization. Copley also has a parent organization, but um, we queried them, um, and it doesn't add a lot to their day's cash on hand. Um, I think about six days, is that correct? So. Um, and then um, they're, you know, projecting this strong NPR growth for 19 in their budget, but um, it's even a higher um, rate of growth when you look at their fiscal year 18 
projections um, to 19 budget, 8.4%. Their health care reform investments, um, again, as we said, totaled 0.1%. Um, um, we would recommend that you accept those. Um, NPR growth rate, um, here's where we begin to sort of give you a menu of options. Um, and so options are to accept it, to reduce, um, and we um, do think that a, a reduction would be in line um, given their uh, projections to um, 19 budget and um, so I'll just leave it at that. And then another option might be, um, because this is, I mean, this is so, um, you know, the cuts to get them to the 2.9% target are um, significant enough. They, there would be no margin and then some unless they found some significant ways to cut expenses. So one option is to, I mean, I think, um, you know, and I'll look to our general counsel here if she doesn't mind, um, but one, um, you know, one, um, option. I think we have to approve something um, for them, and so one option is to approve, but then ask them to present an alternative budget, possibly. Um, and then this on the is, we've had precedent on this because this has happened before with we, this particular hospital. Yeah, we have a date by which we have to establish a budget, but we right. have asked hospitals to come back in right. um, and bring us other information so we might make adjustments. Okay. That. Yep, thank you, Judy, I appreciate it. And then um, the commercial rate increase, um, similar, um, you know, they're coming in at 7.9%. Options are to accept it, um, which I um, don't anticipate the board going in that direction to reduce it by some amount and to um, ask the hospital to suggest an alternative budget and um, propose rate increase. The, the um, you know, just to give you an idea again, a reduction to 4% um, would again eliminate um, their margin unless there were some um, strong expense cuts. So I'll reluctantly start it off. Um, I don't think that we, we should accept the premise that um, decisions made are effectively coming out of margins. I think that decisions made have to include hospitals going back to the planning table and reconfigure what their budget is. So um, in this particular, this one, I had the highest rate increase of, uh, commercial rate increase of any of the different hospitals only because we historically had cut them over the last couple of years. And I feel, um, at least looking at the day's cash on hand, that this is a hospital that's headed in the wrong direction. I'd kind of like to give them a bridge to try to get to the right direction. So, um, but with that being said, I, I know I couldn't go more than four and a half percent. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, this is definitely one of the hospitals that's challenged and the it's almost like they are bridging their gap with the higher NPR growth and the higher commercial rate increase. They're actually showing some utilization declines. Um, I'm also sympathetic to the last three years they've had a rate reduction and possibly um, they were you know too deep and and that's that's kind of has hurt them um, you know I was looking at a commercial rate increase of, of potentially a four to five percent um, I think an eight percent is is not realistic to be given I also think that their NPR growth is optimistic particularly when you look at the 18 projection off the 19 budget to be an 8.4 percent and so I would really challenge them to go back and bridge that change. They, they did a bridge off the budget to where they were showing, and I think they really need to bridge that change back to their projection because I think some of that would fall out of their NPR growth. When we look at 
their history at NPR in 15, they were at 63.5, 16, they were at 62.8, 17, they went up to about 65, 18, they're going to 66.4. So every year they've been fluctuating around a million to a million and a half up. This is going to 72.1 from 66 on an NPR growth. And again, I think it's almost plugging to the expense load that they have. And it, that's not sustainable. They, they can't continue, you know, on their expenses. They were at uh, 67 in 2017. Um, in their 18 projection, they're at 69, and they're going up to 71.7. So we're continuing to see expenses going up significantly. NPR going up because of rate and um, uh, and just uh, the higher NPR primarily due to the rate growth and utilization going down. So, you know, they have to correct this. Um, but I also do worry about their viability, their day's cash on hand. They're projecting um, what was supposed to be a flat margin to down 2.2 million um, this year because they're missing the top line. So again, it's, you know, how, how can they react to missing the top line, changing their expense load, and getting a you know a P and L that's going to be financially viable for them. So the 66 days on cash, I think, is about the lowest um, of yes. all the hospitals. Um, so I think we need to be careful about you know how much we push their rate increase. Uh, but I think it you know eight percent is they were you know solving their problem by having a rate increase rather than solving their problem by cutting expenses. Um, we are not telling them to cut utilization. <laughs> Um, and we're, we're just telling them that this, this, um, you know, is not a realistic ask. So I, I would be around the, yeah, four to five percent for commercial. Tom, you want to keep going that way? <clears throat> sure. Um, everything that Maureen said, make it easy. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 th I think Maureen hit it, is if you, again, look at their long-term trend, on NPR, it's uh, up year over year 1.5 percent on average, but their expense line is up 4.7 percent, and uh, with a wind in their face of rate cuts. In 2016, it was a, um, a 4 percent cut. In 2017, a 3.7 percent cut. In 2018, 3.4 percent. And so now we've come to the uh, inevitable conclusion that in in, in uh, 2018. Um, their margin is negative. So uh, I, and their day's cash has dropped from 108 um, in 2015 down to 62 in, 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 in 2018 pr projected. So um, I, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't feel it unfair if, if uh, we gave them a decent rate increase. Um, uh, with the one, the concern I have is with the one that's proposed, 20, uh, 19 over 2018 um, <clears throat> projected, uh, they would be calling for an 11 percent in increase in commercial uh, re revenues, uh, uh, which may, may not be a stretch with a, a, a seven or seven percent or so uh, rate increase. But I, I, I think this is this hospital's at a turning point, and um, uh, uh, you know we should try to help stabilize uh, the ship of state there. I just wanted to add one other thing, too, um, I meant to say, which was, you know, this was another hospital, too, and their budget for top line, it was 69.4, and they're coming in at 67.7. Their expenses were 69.3, and they're coming in at 69.9. So it's, again, you know, showing if we get kind of ahead of our skis and we're, you know, putting up a higher top line and we don't hit it, they're not able to pull back on their expenses. They stay the same or go up slightly which creates the loss. And that's why on the 5.9, even without a rate change or anything, I think they're not going to hit the 5.9, um, which is an 8% increase year over year. And they're going to have an expense load for that. So if they don't change that, it's just, you know, nothing that we do is going to change that. They're just going to miss their top line, have their expenses, and lose money again. I, I agree with what everyone said. I do think. Uh, both NPR and commercial rate is too high. Um, and I'm sympathetic to the financial difficulties, although I'm 
probably less sympathetic having lived through the board meetings where we were enforcing the budget overages um, because they've made a particular business choice and it's not working out the way they expected and I think they need to do exactly what you said Maureen which is focus on expense reduction because they're trying to be a surgery center without the efficiencies of a surgery center so um, I would I would also bring down both the rate increase and the NPR um, and I'm fine with uh, Maureen's range or Kevin's 4.5 so I'm fine with 4 or 4.5 Um, so I agree. It's great to go last because I can agree with almost everything everybody said. Although I think I'm at a place where I feel as though the budget, I would send it back and ask for a redo. Um, I'm sympathetic to their day's cash on hand, but I also think that, and, and their financial situation and the operating losses and the deficits, we've been talking to this hospital about expense reduction for multiple years, um, and I think that they've tried some small changes. I think larger changes are what's needed. Um, their marketing costs are high. Their cost of admission per admission is high. Their FTEs per adjusted bed are high above the average. Um, they're asking for one of their big drivers, expense drivers, is a 30% increase in drug costs. We didn't see that in any other hospital. Um, most other hospitals seem to be controlling some of their costs through some of their group purchasing agreements that they have. I don't know. What, I wish I could ask now Copley which, you know, if they're part of NIA or some other group purchasing agreement. Um, but I do think that to the extent that perhaps they could, instead of us imposing a certain rate, lowering the rate uh, to some degree in the NPR, I would like to see them perhaps come back in with something that's more reasonable um, in terms of a commercial rate and NPR uh, ask um, with the idea that they have actually looked harder at their expenses and their expense line, um, because I agree with everything that everybody has said already. Uh, so that's kind of where I am. And I know that they were optimistic about potentially joining OneCare. That may change their budget as well if they've moved in that direction. So maybe that could help in some ways. I don't know. Um, so certainly for me, I want to see a reduction in expenses to some degree matched up with uh, aligned more with the lower growth rates and commercial rates in NPR, and I'd like to see them just try again. Let me ask you a question, though. Do you actually think that they would be able to come in in, in a week's time with a revised budget? I don't know, and maybe it's not in a week's time. I mean, maybe the budget, and this is where I defer to Judy, but I, I have remember in the past, we've actually asked uh, Copley to come back in, and they came back in in December with a revised budget. I don't remember what the, how we legally uh, did that, but I, and the other piece I would say actually is I'd like to see them look at some, you know, they're the only hospital or one of the only hospitals that doesn't have any grant income. So what are they doing to, gener to increase revenues as well as reduce costs? But I don't know, I defer to Judy. I know we've, we've kind of been down this road before, so. Um, we have, and we've actually had some, um, I won't call it, non-responsiveness, but I know when we were doing enforcement, it was very hard to get some of these adjustments done as requested sending things back. What I would suggest is that we have the hospital budget team look at this again, confer with Copley about what was discussed here today and that we would like a new budget back for the board to consider. And I think we should try to give them some targets of cuts in expenses or whatever and ask how they would do that because I think without giving some sort of target that you might be able to establish a budget around, it will be very difficult to just get a fully um, redone budget because I think some of the budget detail, once we um, have it voted on and establish the parameters, we want to know they're going to be able to do that. So I think, I think we should talk um, in this coming week about what kind of targets are realistic and how could they achieve that and get that information um, in front of the board before you vote. 
I would just add that um, the hospital budget team believe is quite skeptical that they could get something in a week. You know, they'd need to um, develop it. Uh, and we want it, I, I mean, I'll editorialize here a bit, but we would like it to be a thoughtful um, resubmission. And, um, you know, they would most likely need to take it through their board of directors and so forth. So um, it would seem to us that the option is to um, approve something as a placeholder if we decide that we want them to weigh in given the extent of the potential cuts and um, give them some time to put together a thoughtful document. So we, just, just throwing it out there, I would suggest that the target that we give them is the 4.5% commercial rate and then reduce the NPR accordingly and go from there. And we also can include, as we have in the past, um, a regular reporting, which may be in person at, at, um, as needed. In person as needed by the hospital. I think on this particular hospital, we probably should go to a quarterly reporting. I, I think you, you could even say the 4.5 and a 3.2 NPR growth, because I, I don't think they're, they're going to get that growth. I think they're optimistic in what their growth was just just from their trend line. So I think it may end up being around the, you know, they would be at 2.9, I guess 2.8 if we gave them, but 3.2. I think that makes sense. And I want to clarify, it wouldn't be in substituting for the regular reporting, but if they had to come in and answer questions for the board as actual numbers were coming back in, um, that option should be available. Right, yeah, we are just going to point out that, um, you know, once we get into the next fiscal year, um, toward the end of the year, they begin reporting monthly. Right. All of them usually do. Yeah, it, don't they report them, their numbers. We don't have them, though, come into the no. board. That's right. And that's, that's I correct. think, what the distinction we're trying to make. Yeah. Okay. Um, Northeastern Vermont Regional Hospital. Um, so uh, they have come in with a budget of almost 81 million. They represent 3.1 percent of the system total. Um, they have proposed um, some adjustments. Um, and their NPR growth with the proposed adjustment would be 4.8%. Um, for their health care reform investments, they have um, requested the 0.4% allowance and have provided documentation on um, what those investments would be. Um, they are not participating in the ACO programs in 2018, but um, indications are that they will be um, participating in the Medicaid program in 2019. And their fiscal year 19 rate request is 4% with an estimated 1% value of 384000 um, Northeastern's uh, 19 budget operating margin is 1.7%. Um, total margin is the same, 1.7%. Um, they have 122.3 days cash on hand in their 19 budget, and their um, fiscal year 18 projection to 19 budget MPR growth is a little below their MPR budget to budget growth rate of 4.8. Um, we are recommending um, that uh, you do accept the adjustment to the fiscal year 18 base, and you guys actually made that um, preliminary decision um, last week um, that relates to a cardiology transfer. We also recommend that you um, accept their health care reform investments um, at 300,000. Uh, I'll just note, particularly 
um, 200,000 of that was either ACO dues or accountable community for health expenses. And um, we had some questions about how they might measure effectiveness of the accountable community for health and how they might use those dollars. We did get a response from Laurel Ruggles on how they would measure um, success. But um, if they end up um, participating in the ACO as we anticipate, um, we um, could rely on the rigor of our ACO budget process to understand how those dollars are being spent. Um, their NPR growth rate um, from fiscal year 18 budget to 19 budget is 4.8% um, with the adjustment. Uh, we're laying out two options. One is to accept it. The other is to reduce by um, 700,000. So we received a letter last week from uh, Robert Hersey, who's here and who is their CFO. And um, there were a couple of items in there. Oh, it, it, it basically related to drivers in um, the revenue, um, projected revenue increase. And there were a couple that um, uh, we weren't sure about. One is that the, um, so they, they identified some mental health expenses that seemed um, legitimate to the staff that, I mean, they're all legitimate, but they seemed really important. Um, some, um, you know, ways of caring for people who are um, arriving at their hospital in need of mental health treatment, embedding clinicians in um, ED. Um, there was some palliative care um, increase in there. But there were a couple of um, items that um, we, weren't sure about that added up to about 700,000. The first was that um, the part-time psychiatrists, which didn't appear to be in their narrative but was identified in the letter, um, the narrative actually indicated that that psychiatrist might have been um, financed using uh, 2018 health care reform dollars, so it seemed like that might be sort of um, double counting, and I think that was um, the best I could tell. It was around 115,000, um, and then um, there was 600,000 that was related to expense increases, um, wage increases, drug costs, and so forth that didn't seem to um, necessarily have revenue associated with. So that's where we um, came up with the 700,000. But this is it's a pretty complicated. Um, discussion, and that's why we sort of bump them into the more complex hospital realm. And then um, on the commercial rate increase, they're um, asking for 4%, and again, um, we're thinking that the options are either to accept or potentially reduce um, uh, the value of a 1% rate increase, again, is 384000 um, estimated. Um, on this one, I would just push a little on the rate increase and push for some more cost savings. I believe um, the, hold on one sec, their inflation adjustments were, I think, about a million four. And I just think, you know, this is where we could push um, a, a bit to get more cost savings. I think overall they've done a good job. So I was looking at a 25 to 3% commercial rate. Each percentage is about 400000 so it would be, you know, about a 600000 ask um, in cost reduction. Um, when you look at their... Increases in expenses in 2017 actual was 77.4. In the budget, it was 78.6. They're trending um, above budget, both in revenue and expenses. Expenses are 79.8. 
but in the 19 budget, we're going from 79.8 to 83.2. And, you know, there's a lot of things going on in there. Depreciation's up, other things are up. But, you know, that trend is um, we're, we're showing a 4.6% increase on revenue on top line and a 4.6% on expenses. And, you know, we need to generate some income off those expenses. So, um, you know, Overall, that would be the adjustment um, I would look at. It may still trend them higher than the NPR growth rate of 3.2, but I think they've had some things going on, cross borders um, and things like that, that have um, impacted their increase. Tom? <clears throat> um, you know, again here, the, the, the trends are, are a little rich. Um, the NPR trend going back to 2015 has been 5.9%, uh, and the expense trend has been 6.8%. And uh, so, uh, and the uh, rate increase average uh, over the, that period of time has been 4.2%. So I don't, uh, um, you know, um, I, I don't have any specific recommendation at this point. I, I would like to point out. Um, just a contextual uh, issue that um, has jumped out at me as I've gone through these budgets. And here's an example of one where they are not project projecting any major uh, increase in, in, in Medicaid uh, revenues. You have four, four payers, commercial and uh, uh, Medicare and Medicaid, and then you have what individuals pay uh, through their, their premiums. But I, I, I do want to note that in the, of the $83 million total NPR increase that we're dealing with in 2019 over 2018, only 4.7 of that, 4.8 of that uh, is associated with Medicaid increases. Um, only four hospitals have Medicaid, uh, site Medicaid increases associated with a rate increase, and that means that the other 10 do not. Um, so uh, I, I think what I'm seeing here and is uh, a live example of the cost shift. Um, and uh, it's interesting to note that it's, it's not a secret that every hospital from UVM down to the smaller ones of Brattleboro mentioned the cost shift um, and documented it. So, um, you know, I, I'm looking at, at uh, this budget and I'm not seeing uh, Medicaid uh, sharing in the uh, um, increased revenues um, for their, their, their proposed NPR increase. And uh, again, it's most of the, most of the burden is falling on the commercial insurers, um, which is, uh, um, I, 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 think, I think, a structural problem here. Okay, Robin. I think it's interesting that you chose to point that out given uh, this district's legislative delegation, Tom. <laughs> um, You're ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I was, I was very happy to hear about the decision to join uh, the ACO in Medicaid for 2019, and I would certainly accept the ACO particip participation fees and the palliative care increases as health care reform investments. Um, and I, in terms of NPR and commercial, they are both on the high side. I liked Maureen's uh, suggestion about cutting the rate and then adjusting the NPR. Um, so I actually, like Robin, I was happy to hear that there was movement on um, One Care for Medicaid. Um, I look at the day's cash on hand a little below average, and the margins, 1.7, interesting that there's no significant non-operating net revenue, right? The total margin and the operating margin are the same, um, but not particularly high. Uh, I do think, though, that the NPR growth rate and the commercial rate increase are on the high side, and in particular because we just rebased them last year for out-of-state uh, revenue. So we gave them, an, you know, an adjustment in NPR higher than what we had expected last year or what we had uh, guided last year. So to me, I would like to see some of that coming down. So I appreciated your suggestion, Maureen. So I, too, appreciated Maureen's suggestion. Um, I uh, agree on the uh, adjustment to the base, on the uh, health care reform investment. Um, and again, 
because we um, gave them an increase over the guidance in the previous year, um, I would like to see some reductions in both NPR and commercial rate. Um, I could live with that range that Maureen suggested, 2.5 to 3. Um, I probably would be more comfortable on the higher end of the range than the lower end, but um, and from there we have to take the NPR down accordingly. But in this particular case, I'm not sure that I would just take the NPR down by the amount of the commercial rate reduction. I think I might take it down to the 3.2 percent, which is what the guidance was. So that one again was crystal clear, right, Pat? Uh -huh. I think one thing to look at there, though, right, because they're um, they're up in 18. So if we reduce this rate, if we reduce the commercial rate, what we're talking about, you know, they're probably going to only be up three or so. I'm, I'm not saying we can't go lower. I'm just saying they're up in 18. So the reality is, you know, if they're coming off of a higher number in 18. If we reduce them to 3.2, I guess I'd want to see what the 3.2 is. Um, if we were at a 3.2 against their budget, yes. But what is it against their projection? Because that's going to be a two, you know, high one or two. It just might not be realistic. I'm, so that's the only struggle there. But. Yeah, I would just add that there, um, you know, again, I'd refer you to the letter um, that we received last week, but um, there are some services that they're providing, um, uh, particularly around mental health um, care, and we know that um, part of the state, um, and really the whole state lacks capacity for mental health treatment. Um, there's some uh, additional providers, I believe urology and um, a couple of other services. And, um, you know, they, I, I just would refer you again to that letter because it really does outline what the drivers are, revenue. But I think the drivers are similar to other hospitals, and the reality is that everyone has to treat mental health the same way that they treat physical health. So, um, uh, Brattleboro Memorial Hospital is the next one. Um, Brattleboro is coming in with a proposed budget of almost 84 million. They're 3.2 percent of the system uh, total. Um, they've proposed an adjustment um, with without it. Their NPR growth is 6.5. With it, it's 4.8. They um, have. Uh, requested health reform investments that exceed the 0.4 percent allowance they are particip they are you know one of the smaller hospitals that's participating in all three ACO programs in 2018 Springfield is the other and their fiscal year 19 rate request is 4.9 percent with an estimated 1 percent value of 392,000. Uh, their uh, operating margin in their fiscal year 19 budget is submitted is quite low at 0.3 percent. They're one of the hospitals that's projecting a fiscal year 18 operating loss. Uh, similarly, their total margin at 1.2 percent with a projected 18 deficit. Uh, days cash on hand, uh, pretty good, 196.2 days. Um, their NPR growth uh, projected to budget is um, actually 6.8%. So the adjustment you all um, tentatively approved last week, which was um, to restore an NPR reduction that was imposed last year that we believe shouldn't have been. Um, so that has been um, accepted. So that would bring their NPR growth rate to 4.8%. Their um, health care reform investments, we're recommending that you accept all except for a neurologist um, that they 
are hiring are hired and asked that that be part of their investments. We were having trouble making a direct link between that and the all payer model um, goals, healthcare reform goals. Um, so options, I, I mean, we didn't get real specific here. Um, on uh, the options, I mean, accept or reduce their NPR growth rate, their commercial rate increase at 4.9 percent. Um, I would just note that reducing a half a percentage point to 4.4 would um, nearly eliminate what is already a low operating margin if they did not make concurrent expense cuts. And I would just also note that on the um, VDH um, website, Brattleboro's charges are um, mostly um, below average on, on that website. So. so, Jess, do you want to lead off on this one? Uh, let me, I'm actually just looking for something, so okay. you can start with somebody else. So, Robin, how about leading off on this one? I have no idea what to do with Brattleboro. How's that for a lead off? <laughs> I, th I mean, I do think they're on the high side, uh, but they're clearly having some financial issues, um, although their day's cash looks decent compared to some others. So. Um, I don't know. The rate increase in particular bothers me at almost 5%. So I know that's not very helpful, but that's my thoughts. Okay. You're, I think we tentatively decided last week to accept the uh, um, adjustment to the base. Everybody was okay with that, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay. And I'm good with the health care reform investments as proposed by the staff. At the 315, 518, since that's all they really need for the four. Okay. So, Tom, your thoughts on Brattleboro? Um, so, my thoughts on Brattleboro are that they, they have some problems. Um, the Again, just looking at some of the trends, the uh, N NPR trend with, with the adjustment uh, going back to 2015 is 3.5%. And the expense trend, expense trend is 4.4 percent, and they are looking for a 4.9 percent rate increase. Um, uh, and their trend in that uh, regard has been uh, 2.6 percent going back um, four years. But again, here it's it's the, the you know the, the problem I'm having with rate increases is how do they apply basically to their portfolio? And so here you're looking at. Uh, Assuming the, the rate increase, you're looking at Medicare uh, portion of the NPR going down from 30 million uh, to 24.1 million 2019 budget over 2018 projected. Uh, again, you're looking at the Medicaid portion staying uh, slightly negative at six tenths of one percent, and then you're looking at or we're looking at the commercial portion going um, up 29 percent. From 32 million to 41 million, um, and so it's just I, I'm finding, uh, uh, you know, uh, obviously we've all got to make a decision at one point in time, but I'm a little hesitant because I just don't know how the rate increases apply, uh, you know, apply to these payer mixes, and um, uh, um, so you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's clearly a hospital that that needs to enhance its revenues, um, and in their presentation. Uh, most of that burden has been put on the commercial payers, uh, but I, I I don't see how that's possible, actually. Okay, Maureen. Uh, sure. Um, just looking at their commercial rate increase, um, they had actually a 7% rate increase across 70% of their categories and a 0% on 30%. So they didn't increase some of the physician services and um, drugs and supplies. So um, they also are coming up. They did something similar last year, and we approved a 5.7 percent increase for them last year. So this is another hospital that is becoming fairly dependent on rate increases to help um, maintain their profitability. 
I would recommend a 3.5% rate increase, which would be 5% across um, those 70% categories, and then zero on the other 30%. Um, I'd also comment that their performance um, in 2018, right now, they were projecting a million dollar loss, and now they're projecting a $2 million loss. Um, that most all of that is driven by an increase in bad debt and free care that went from 4.7 to 6.7. And I believe they talked about making some changes and some write-offs. And next year, they have it going back down to um, the more historical levels, which is like five and a half million. So um, that does contribute some to the what will be the year-over-year -year change from their projection. If I if I looked at their um, I think we're showing like a 6.8% change from their budget, from their projection, but part of that's been brought down because of this bad debt free care that's impacting their NPR. Um, but I'd also say this is another hospital. Their utilization seemed to be declining um, and their rates going up. Um, when you look at their expenses, in 2017 it was 81.3, in 2018 it's 80, about, just about 84, and in 2019 budget is 87. So, you know, again, need to look at those cost increases. I believe they had a salary plus uh, uh, another adjustment um, in their pay scale. So that's one area they could potentially reduce. So if we were to cut them to the 3.5%, uh, I think that's about a $550,000 decrease, um, which would, you know, they need to offset from expenses. That would be my recommendation. So similar to uh, Maureen's recommendation, I had them in the 3.4 to 3.9 commercial rate range. Um, this is um, a hospital that I think is trying to do all the right things as far as collaboration, participation in, in uh, all three areas in the ACO. Um, so, you know, you, you kind of root for them. Um, but I do think that there has to be a reduction in that commercial rate. And so, um, again, my range was 3.4 to 3.9, and Maureen's 3.5 falls right in there. So, Great. Thank you. Um, so, again, I, I, I agree with much of what has been said. This is a hospital, I think, that's trying to do all the right things. I was very impressed. First of all, that they're all in on all three payers. Um, hopefully, will be again. Um, their access issues—they reduced, you know, these new patient appointments from 120 days to 30 days. And I think they're really trying to get at uh, developing more stronger primary care network and, and move population health in the way that we want to. Their days cash on hand is pretty high, so I can um, see a slight shaving in commercial rate or a shaving in commercial rate. One of the reasons I'm not advocating for a huge reduction in commercial rate is when I, and I've been looking at these charge masters, but when I look at them, they're really low relative to many other hospitals and well below the state average um, on many of these charges. So, and again, it's just a charge master, I understand that, but it's a proxy for me for what is the actual price relative to what other hospitals are putting on their charge master. So, um, I would probably be um, in the range that you're talking about, Kevin, um, you know, three and a half to four. But again, allowing them, uh, you know, uh, some leg room there to increase, you know, to reverse the deficits and the operating losses, and realizing that their price increases or their char gross charge increases are not similar to some of the other hospitals that are already above the average. So I think that uh, we accepted some points there, especially the adjustment to the base. The healthcare reform investment for the staff recommendation. I think what I'm hearing is that there seems to be a consensus here to lower the commercial rate to below 4%. And uh, I think we'll have to iron out those details. Uh, the next hospital is Northwestern Medical Center. Um, Northwestern's proposed budget is 113 million. It's 4.3 percent of the system um, total. They've uh, recommended a number of adjustments. Um, if we accepted um, 
all of them, um, their NPR growth rate would be 3.2%. If we accepted none of them, it would be 6.3%. You'll see that we've um, recommended um, a, a portion of their uh, proposed adjustments. Healthcare reform investments, they did um, request the amount equivalent to 0.4%. And they are another hospital that has been um, an early adopter of the ACO model. They're participating in all three ACO programs in 18, and indications are that they will continue to do so in 19. Their um, fiscal year 19 rate request is the lowest of any hospital in the system at 2%, and the estimated value of 1% is 530,000. Uh, their operating margin uh, projected for 19 in their submitted budget is pretty good at 2.3%. Their total margin at 3.2%. They have the most days cash on hand of any um, hospital in the system at 306.5 days in their 19 budget. Uh, their uh, rate of growth from 18 projected to 19 budget is 6 0.3%. Their um, adjustments related to um, provider acquisitions, and um, the, 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 only, the reason the staff didn't uh, um, recommend approving all of them is that um, several of them um, are actually for services that don't begin until 10 1 of 19, and so it wouldn't um, be an adjustment to the 18 base. Um, but there is a um, significant adjustment of 1.7 million for a transfer that occurred of um, their occupational health practice, and that one the staff does recommend accepting. Uh, healthcare reform investments we recommend accepting. MPR growth rate with the staff um, recommended adjustment is 4.6%. Um, you know, again, our options are to accept that or to reduce it. Um, it would take a reduction of um, about 1.5 million to get them down to the 3.2% NPR growth rate. We recommend accepting their commercial rate increase again as um, the lowest of all the hospitals. Okay, Jess, you want to start off on this one? Sure. Um, so again, Northwestern is a hospital, I think, that leads the state in a lot of the health reform initiatives and you know, being all in and all the all pair and, and taking risk early. Um, I appreciate that. On the flip side of that, I appreciate their days cash on hand, which we've always looked at and many other hospitals look at enviously. Um, I accept the staff recommendation on the adjustment, um, given you know the uh, transfers that are not have not occurred yet. Um, and so with that, the 4.6 percent growth rate is still above you know, our guidance. And given that, I would like to see that come down. Um, you know, they have a total margin of 3%. They have days cash on hand. I think it could come down. Um, I have to think about whether that 1.5 million is the right amount, but somewhere, you know, I, I would like to see them at 3.2, which is what our guidance was. So perhaps that's the way to do it. Okay. Um. So I think we're probably all in agreement with the staff recommendation on the um, adjustment. And um, the health care reform investments certainly look uh, acceptable. Um, you know, and again, they did come in with the lowest commercial rate increase, but the NPR is too high. And um, I didn't have it going all the way down to the 3.2 that Jess had it, but I had it going down by a million dollars corresponding computation of the NPR rate. Marie? Um, yeah, I think I'm actually okay with everything on the page. I just want to clarify, isn't the 1.5 million 
overage, if you will, because in their 2019 budget, they have these new physician practices coming on. It's not in the 2018 base. If, um, I guess there's one of two ways that you could slice that, right? One is to say, okay, take those out of your budget right now, and then when you get them approved in, in, at 10-1, you know, they would end up coming in and being acceptable. Um, seems like a lot of work, and Chris is here. To <laughs> or the other option would be to, to say, if, if in fact those really would qualify to be, you know, and I know the staff hasn't, um, you know, opined on all of that, but if, if in fact they would be qualified, then I'm okay with the 4.6. Um, 2% definitely has to go down. No, I'm kidding. I think uh, the two, I, I think they came in and they talked about their willingness to take a lower rate um, increase than what they would have wanted. So I, I'm actually okay with everything you have up there, including the 4.6%, if in fact the 1.5 you know, would have been approved. I, I think it's just a timing, and Chris did, they did bring that up in their presentation. Um, if you say those aren't qualified numbers. Can, can I, I just ask just... about this, because this is, I hear what you're saying, Maureen, and I agree with you, if they're actually transfers. If these are new services to the community that don't exist elsewhere in the system, then it's not a transfer. Okay. So that's where I think a little bit of um, homework, maybe this week between, this week and next week's. My recollection is that some of this 1.5 million is coming from services that that don't already exist in the community and in fact probably exist in UVM's catchment area and now is being relocated to, to Northwest. One way to deal with that is this is these are services that occur in the state at large and maybe we make the adjustment downward at UVM and upward at Northwestern because there's services that are pre-existing but I, I don't think that they exist right now in the hospital service area of Northwest. Um, yeah, thank you for bringing this up. I should have explained um, a little more carefully about this. The um, So these three services um, we we did get applications for physician acquisitions and transfers from NMC. Um, unfortunately, they came at precisely the time the 14 hospitals' budgets hit. <laughs> so um, we haven't um, had a chance to really dig in on those. On the face of it, um, I think at least um, one of them is appears to me to be, uh, I guess it would be called a transfer. There's a Tiring. I'm um, going to say I think it's a surgeon um, that um, they um, have been able to replace with a hospital, uh, an independent practicing surgeon, and they've been able to replace that person with a hospital um, employed um, surgeon. So on the face of it, that one would look good. The other two, um, I think there was ENT, maybe urology. I can't remember what the third service was. Well, sorry, Chris, um, but um, those, you know, we just would, it would be helpful to, to look more carefully at those when we can. Um, you know, it may end up being, you know, sort of a one for one where down the road we end up where they're proposing anyway. We just haven't had a chance to look as carefully at that as we would like, so. So I guess I'm okay with Maureen and to the extent that if they are legitimate physician transfers that we will approve down the line than, than baking it in now. I guess my question is, are they, do they fall into that category? But what I'm hearing Pat say in code is they don't have time to really do the due diligence in the next week. I don't know if that's what you really meant, Pat, but I think Well, I don't know if I meant that. We'll do our best to yeah. come back to you with more information on those next week. How's that? But I that? would say if you, if you aren't able to do what you would normally do with this application, that we should go with the 3.2 with the understanding that you will then process the application, and that typically would then adjust the NPR. Yeah. Yep. Tom? Otherwise, I'm, so I'm good. I'm good with what you guys said. I don't need to say anything else. So again, uh, just looking at some long-term trends, the expen uh, expense trend has been 6.2%. Uh, the rate increase trend has been a 1.8%. Um, and uh, the NPR trend is, uh, I guess, a volatile here, depending on what we uh, assume about um, uh, these adjustments. Um, I, I would, I would uh, support um, 
uh, at least looking at uh, a su some reduction um, in their um, uh, uh, in, in their rate. Um, I'm looking back again on their their trends in terms of total margin and their 8.1 percent, 6.2 percent, 6.8 percent, 1.4 percent, 2.9 percent, and uh, this proposed 3.2 percent. Um, I don't want to punish somebody for doing for doing well. Um, um, but I, again, here don't uh, have, a, have a complete grasp of how the rate structure affects uh, commercial Medicaid and Medicare. Um, looking at their 2019 budget over 2018, um, um, to, to, to get from their 2018 um, proposed to or, or projected to their 2019 budget, uh, they would be looking for an additional 6.3 million from commercial, a decrease in Medicaid of 1.2 million, and an increase in Medicare of 1.9 million. And so I, I just want to spend some more time thinking about how that all gets integrated, um, but I, I, I could support um, a rate reduction here. May I just clarify whether you mean a, a reduction in the commercial rate or a reduction in the rate of MPR growth? Well, I, I'm, I'm uh, not looking at the NPR growth. I'm, uh, I'm looking at the, the rate from 2%. Maybe it could be a little bit lower. And I'm, I'm uh, looking at trying to understand, though, how that might affect NPR. Uh, given uh, the the payer mix, and I, I just don't have a grasp on that. So uh, it's it's uh, until I, uh, you know, uh, for a lot of these hospitals, until I can understand that better, I don't want to be firm about oh, let's cut it by half a percent or a full percent or whatever, because I I just don't know how the math works. Another one that was clear is Mark. Well, really, as I said, I mean, um, we had anticipated just sort of in a cursory fashion going over these more complex okay. hospitals, so I think we're getting more than we hoped for. I guess, and I just want to say, I'm really appreciative of their commercial rate increase. I mean, 2% is was the lowest, so thank you, Chris, if you're still here. <laughs> I appreciated that. Okay. Um, the next hospital is Springfield, a uh, base budget, uh, a proposed budget of almost 60 million. They're 2.3 percent of the system total. Um, their NPR um, growth um, is 1 percent. They're a hospital that was coming in quite low on their um, actuals versus um, per, uh, budget. And um, they did not request health care reform. Um, investments and didn't need them to hit the NPR target. There are another um, smaller hospital that has um, stepped out and is participating in all three ACO programs in 2018 and no um, indication that that won't continue. Their fiscal year 19 um, rate request is 5% and the estimated value of a 1% rate increases um, 319,000. Uh, a relatively, um, you know, lowish uh, operating margin in their 19 budget um, of 1.3 percent, a total margin of um, 2.7 uh, percent. I would note that they are projecting an operating loss and deficit um, in fiscal year 18. Their days cash on hand are at uh, 106.8 days, and their 18 projection to 19 budget NPR growth is 5 percent. The staff recommends. Um, that they um, that you accept their NPR growth rate um, at one percent. In terms of the commercial rate increase, again, we're just sort of um, suggesting options here. One is to accept it. Um, the other is a slight reduction. Uh, a one percent reduction would um, take up nearly 40 percent of their operating margin if they had no um, c uh, concurrent expense cuts. 
So Springfield, I thought, when they came in, did a pretty good job of talking about how they had historically tried to uh, not raise rates um, in that they may, be, may have hurt themselves in the long run by that. Um, but on the same token, I think 5% is, is outside of the acceptable range. So um, my feeling on this one would be to cut it by 1% down to 4 Anybody else want to jump in here? Anybody? Okay. Um, yeah, I think with Springfield, they're another hospital that has, for the past two years, continued to show that they're soft at their top line to their forecast. Their expenses stay about the same, and they lose money when they were projecting not to. So in 2017, um, they're projected NPR was 59.2, they came in at 52 million, and instead of making 1.8 million on net operating income, they lost 3.8 million. In 2018, their projection was 60.8 million in total operating revenue. They're coming in at 58.6. Their expenses were supposed to be 59.8, and they're coming in at 59.6, so only a reduction of 200,000 on a over two million top line reductions. So instead of making a million dollars, they're losing 900. So again, this is another one that's trying to make that up through a rate increase when they really need to align their expenses more in line with what their revenue is going to be. And when they come in with, they're looking now at a 5% top line growth against projection, only 1% against their NPR. They may be setting themselves up uh, again for having too high of a year-over-year -year increase, putting their expense base in, and if they don't make that, there's not enough time for them to react and they lose money again. Um, so it's a challenge. I, I think the 5% rate is high, um, and they did get last year a 6.5% rate increase. Uh, in 2017, they were at zero. So, you know, there may be some correction there, but last year they had one of the higher rate increases. So I was between, you know, three to four percent. I think they need to really look at their costs, not just from a rate reduction, but really aligning where their re a realistic forecast for their top line with expenses. Otherwise, we could be back here next year. It, with them having a, a loss again and, and missing top line. So I definitely think they're struggling. Um, their day's cash on hand's not that high. So, you know, I was with a small commercial rate decrease. Oh. Jess? Yeah, this is a hospital that I struggle with. Um, similarly, I feel like they are, it's probably optimistic that they're going to get 5% from projected to budget growth. Um, and you know we did off, we did give them a six percent rate hike last year. They're asking for five percent this year. Many of their inpatient gross charges are above the state average already, um, but they have operating losses, deficits. They're in a very um, challenging community that has many socioeconomic uh, challenges. So I, I hesitate to cut their commercial rate too much, but I would support a small you know some cut in that. Um, simply also because their gross charge is already high. So it's not, this is not the vehicle to right the ship, I think, to keep asking for commercial rate increases. So expense reduction has got to be in order. Okay, Robin? Um, I'm, I'm at the same place as everyone else. Tom? <clears throat> Just again, looking at their long-term trend, their NPR trend has been very meager uh, at seven-tenths of one percent. Growth rate, and uh, there, and that's despite rate increases of, uh, on average, three point six nine percent. And here they're looking for a five percent. Uh, again, I'm I'm worried that the payer mix is something that maybe I don't understand, or maybe um, uh, they're they're uh, um, a, a bit murky. But here again, uh, it's not the commercial rate payer that is. Uh, uh, looking to fund their proposed increase. It is actually Medicare um, uh, c comprising 54% of the proposed increase. 
And uh, I just, you know, I, I would just like to spend some time thinking about this and, and understanding it and talking to uh, at least w one or two board members, not, not, not collectively, um, to get some insight that maybe I just don't have right now. But um, their expense trend has been uh, very modest as well, 2.3%. Um, it is a hospital in a high needs area, and uh, uh, I would just uh, look to set a rate that just puts them on a stable course. So the last three hospitals are the um, UVM Health Network hospitals. Um, there's a fair amount of complexity here, so we'll um, walk through them one by one. Um, there, so first of all, all three hospitals have proposed adjustments to the fiscal year 18 um, base. In the case of Central Vermont, it's um, in two areas. One is um, an ACO accounting change. Um, the hospitals, um, until this budget, have netted out their, um, their ACO participation fees um, from NPR on the advice of, um, you know, their auditor, possibly not. But, you know, there's, uh, let me just say that in the ACO accounting on the participation fees, there is no right answer. Um, we have auditor, because this is so new, we have auditors who disagree on how this should be booked. Um, you know, there's probably some variation in how hospitals are doing it, and it's um, a very high priority for your hospital budget team in the coming year um, to, to sort of sort that out and hopefully give some guidance to hospitals on how to book these participation fees and even the FPP, the fixed perspective payments. So it's not a right or wrong answer, but UVM, the UVM hospitals have made a change because their auditor recommended it. So um, it, it makes it look like their MPR um, is increasing more than it is, partly because of that accounting change. So I just want you to keep that in mind as you look at the MPR growth rates for these three hospitals. Um, and it's laid out um, to some degree in their narrative as well and in their responses to, to staff questions. So, um, and then the other adjustment is for CBMC is for uh, provider transfers. And you'll see that we have um, a similar situation with them as we have with uh, Northwestern. And we'll explain it later. Um, their proposed budget is uh, $211 million. They're 8.1% of the system total. Without any adjustments, um, their um, NPR growth would be 6.5%. With the staff recommended adjustment, it's still 6.5%. And if we accepted all of their proposed adjustments, it would be 5%. Their health care reform investments, they did um, propose some, and um, it is um, at about that 0.5%. 4% um, level. They are another hospital participating in all three ACO programs, and their fiscal year 19 um, rate increase request is 2.8% um, with the estimated value of a 1% rate, rate increase at 1.2 million. Uh, their operating margin in their proposed uh, 19 budget is 1.4%. Their total margin is 3.3%. Um, days cash on hand, kind of middle of the pack at 112.7 days. Their um, 18 projected to 19 budget NPR growth is at 3.6%. 
Um, so the adjustments, there was um, an adjustment of $102,702 for a provider acquisition um, of pulmonology practice, which we are um, have approved and are recommending, and you actually agreed that that should be an adjustment to their fiscal year 18 base. Um, the accounting adjustment, we're, we're saying um, not to accept because we're not, you know, we just don't have clear guidance on how to book this. But in saying that, if you um, decide to um, agree with us on that, we would just ask you to still keep it in mind because, again, it um, over, it, it, it's not, we won't be comparing apples to apples from 18 to 19. Um, and so you need to keep in mind that the result of that is that it overstates their MPR growth rate. Healthcare reform investments, we recommend that you accept those. Um, the MPR growth rate with the one adjustment that we're suggesting is 6.5%. Um, some options are that you could accept or reduce it. If you decide to reduce it, one option is to look more at their projections for 18, and um, which are at 3.6%, and so maybe reduce by that 0.5%. Percent uh, commercial rate increase, um, you know, 2.8 percent is one of the lower ones. Um, so you could consider accepting that. If MPR ends up being reduced um, at all, you might want to consider reducing um, the rate to to generate that MPR reduction. Okay. Maureen, do you want to kick it off? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I think we probably are going to need more time than we're going to have today to kind of go through the, the network. But I do want to point out that I think the 6.5 percent really is 5.2 percent to what Pat was saying. What, what we do need to do in order to have apples to apples is move up the, what they put down in expenses um, for the ACL back as a reduction to NPR just for how we're looking at it. You know, we know they may need to report it that way for their auditors. This is something we've already said we need to take offline after this, but we wanted to have consistencies in the budget. So I think the easiest way to fix that right now is moving that expense up, and that does make it 5.2. Um, and that's, that's just, and we can check with Mark on if that's apples to apples, but I believe that it would be. Um, and I just want to state that because, you know, the 6.5 we're looking at is already well and above, um, you know, and if we're at, it, it, it is a 5.2. Um, this one's kind of interesting because what they talked about in their discussion was they didn't get rebased in 2017 because they were only 1.8% above. And so therefore, if they looked at it from, from a, they're where they're coming in in 18, which is higher, it would only be 3.6%. And I may support that, but I would also say if you're trending hot, which they are for 18, there would be potentially some concessions that would have to be given back for coming in higher. So in, right now in 18, um, they are trending, and I'm looking at the roll up, and I think they adjusted it some from this, but they were trending instead of 212, about 217. So they're coming in about four or five million hot on the top line. Um, they're not so on the bottom line because their expenses are going up from 208 to 214, so they're eating more than that as expenses, which is an issue. You, we can't run expenses higher than the increase. So um, my initial one on this would be to look at, at the rate, commercial rate, and go at least 1% below, which is about 1.2 million. And part of that, again, is going to the fact that 18 is running hot. That's why they want to justify having a higher NPR. That would still give them an NPR, I think, of about 4.2% up, so it would be above the 3.2. So, um, you know, I think we're going to be doing more work in total on the network, but I, I would propose to look at a lower commercial rate increase um, potentially giving a little bit higher NPR against budget, because when you actually go against where they're trending, it, it won't be as high. 
um, and adjusting for the making sure we adjust out of their expenses that accounting change um, to, to put it back up, netting it against NPR, and then we can figure out during the year really how we want to report that in the future. Robin? Um, I, Ma Maureen answered my, I had an ACO accounting adjustment because every time, question, because every time I think I understand it, it, it gets turned over in my head. But uh, what you said made sense to me, Maureen, because it made sense to me that uh, it should be apples to apples. So I'll, that's all I'll say about that. Um, and I, I think I'm interested in your idea, Maureen. I don't have any other specific thought my, other than that. Um, part of what I think is going on here is related to sort of the network strategy of moving care to be more local, so which I think is a good thing, and I think overall reduces costs to the healthcare system. And I think to some degree you can see that uh, maybe in the network budget as a whole when you look at it. Um, so to me, that's a mitigating factor. I'm not sure where that lands me on any particular number, but. Um, I'm also thinking about that. I have a, just a quick question in terms of the health care reforms. The, um, uh, in that uh, request is a $300,000 associated with EPIC. Is that simply moving uh, money that was approved in the CON into uh, Central Vermont's budget, or is that an increase? Above what was approved in the in the CON. I have to get back to you. Yeah, can we uh, can we address that question next week? Thank you. Okay. Um, other than that, I uh, uh, here I I note is a distribution of, of the burden of a uh, spent of, of 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 an increase year over year uh, that is much more balanced. Uh, the commercial. Uh, is up 3.3 million in total. Medicaid is up 2.8 million, and Medicare is up 1.3. With Dish going down 135,000, but you know, uh, again, me most hospitals did not assume increases of any significance uh, in Medicaid, and so some. I just wonder where how these numbers get crafted, and I, I've just got to spend some time, you know. Uh, digging into that more deeply so I, I, I understand it and, and, and how it relates to a rate and, uh, and uh, you know, how that rate affects different sources of revenue. So I, I've been uh, sent a text by the taskmaster, Christina, reminding me that uh, we do have to uh, try to be finished by 4.15 and I do want to allow time for public comment. So. Um, with that in mind, I'm just going to say my comments on Central Vermont is I would only reduce the commercial rate by eight tenths of a percent. I'll actually, in the interest of time, hold my comments because I, my thoughts are swirling. So, okay, you are all three. I'm just wondering if we just potentially, I mean, maybe since we only have 10 minutes, do we just move the whole network conversation to next week? We could. I just don't see how we're going to get through. EDM so, with, with, with that in mind, then um, I'm going to make an executive decision, which I know some people aren't going to like, but we will meet on um, Tuesday at 2 o'clock, which I assume was the time that you could be there. We'll also um, meet starting at 9 30 on Wednesday with the intention of um, finishing up that morning at 11 30, which would give our staff at least an hour and a half before we resume again at 1 to make the final decisions. And again, if we can't make the final decisions, we'll be back here the following day. <laughs> so, um, but Christine, I think you have to post. So I think uh, it's safe to post Tuesday at 2 and Wednesday at 9.30. So with that, uh, um, I'll open it up to uh, public comment. We'll take that first, and if we do have a little bit of time left, we can go back to uh, our conversation. Don't everybody jump up at once. Ken. <laughs> <laughs>
challenge to disagree but to do it in not a disagreeable attitude. So I'm working on that. Um, the response that I heard. And I know you can do it. <laughs> Absolutely concerning. And to turn a blind eye to that is uh, not satisfactory. 
I've raised other issues about transparency, and I'll just throw them in. I've said for a number of years there should be transparency about the amount of money being spent on advertising and marketing, and um, I don't believe that there's any information on that. And ultimately, the question is who's paying for all that? And I believe it's the consumer at this point. I think that's very uh, unfortunate and a lack of transparency. And it goes on and on. You know, the fact is that uh, we're moving to a model that I would say, or it's evolved into a model where we have a hospital industrial complex that has a lot of the components of uh, big business. And there's a, there's a conflict that's raging, as you said, and it's the conflict between corporate values and Vermont values. And it's no big secret that I think it's symbolized to the exorbitant pal salaries, particularly at the university levels. And I will take umbrage a little bit with sort of a dismissive tone about things being symbolic. There's actual money that could be rescued to the plan that I laid out. And I refer you to a memo uh, from the state auditor who wrote um, a couple of months ago a, a very brief analysis that he did. And I hope that perhaps you will seek some counsel from the state auditor on the issue and the possible role that the board should have in examining the relationship between salaries, compensation, and the role of the board in some, in some controlling fashion. So, um, you know, what, what I do see is that uh, the growth of the hospital industry um, continues unabated between the exorbitant salaries ever-growing lobbying force of healthcare providers and again enormous sums of money which I have no idea how much but um, this is going on under your watch and I think that you should be asking questions who's paying for the lobbying that's being done on healthcare and it's particularly not surprising from the hospital network so in short I guess I'd say Yes, maybe it's symbolic. There would be money saved in the, in the petition that I wanted. Um, but it's symbolic to me because it would mean you're standing up, frankly, for the consumer. The consumer is the one who paid the, the bill in the end. And it's no great secret that it has become a greater stress every year, despite lots of good attempts and, and continued attempts to bend the curve. The curve has been bent to a degree but it's still moving in the direction that makes healthcare either unaffordable or really not obtainable because of large co-pays and deductibles and other related problems. So I think, you know, I would say that on this issue of petition, um, silence is not golden. I think there is an enormous problem in the fact that the balance between allowing hospitals to have their sovereignty, which they should have, but it reaches a point, and it has gone beyond that point, in my opinion, where um, it is imperative to take a stand. And the proposal I laid out, uh, which seemingly is rejected, and to put a freeze for one year on those making more than $500,000 in hospital administration board. And the second part, which is related, is to ask the board to conduct an analysis to look at, over the five-year period, what the percentage increase has been between a hospital administrative staff, particularly at the University of Vermont Federal Center, and other areas of the service delivery system, including but not limited to the doctors, surgeons, nurses, and the folks that make hospitals work. And let that be a guide, and let the board provide guidance to the hospitals and to the, the boards of hospitals as to a certain level of, uh, of common sense decision making. So I do feel badly that um, seemingly the proposal um, has only gotten a lukewarm response. But I will tell you that the time will come when this issue will uh, 
receive a more favorable and um, there are two components to what I propose even if uh, frankly uh, there isn't a stomach for putting a freeze on exorbitant salaries one could take a look at the percentage increases as I have outlined and report to the public and let the public have a better sense of where the money is being invested uh, while we all worry about precious health care dollars and costs. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you a perspective. Uh, this issue won't go away. Uh, this issue will return. And I'd be happy to be a party to uh, your party where we get closer to a point of saying there's an argument made that there's a perfect logical reason why the board should in fact become engaged in setting certain limits and certain parameters on one of the many cost drivers in the self-care system. So thanks, Ken. As usual, I think that um, the board agrees with a lot more than um, what appears on the surface. But at the same time, um, I just want to point out, and you were around, so you remember the history just as well as I do, and I don't know if it was 15 years ago or what, but um, there was some very good reporting done on Bennington, Vermont, with the tenure of Harvey York. And creatively, Harvey had set up a number of different structures there, but when you cumulatively added those up, he was making 875000 which was, at the time, I think, uh, the head of UVM was in the low 600s. And there, because of that um, light being shown on that salary, there was a public outcry. And I don't think that Tom D is making today what Harvey York made 15 or 20 years ago. So um, I just want to say that what we posted on our website last year did include the 990 information, which did have the names and the salary. So I, I think that um, we, we have started that process of shining the light on it. The community itself, these are nonprofit hospitals run by their local communities. And I think that the board members are hearing from their community members that maybe it's time to take a pause. And, and we'll see. If, I agree with you. If, if things continue on the current path, I think there will be an outcry and something will happen. And that something that will happen will probably be a legislative bill. But I, I'd like to give the opportunity for people at the local level to, to try to right the ship in the meantime. So other members of the public who wish to comment? Walter. Thank you, Walter. And clearly, state employees are, are looking at two years of 1.85%. Yeah. So it, uh, it's a tough time that we live in because some areas of the market are growing in wages much faster than others. I'll leave that at that. Any other? Yes. I'm Mark Stanislaus. Um, I just have some general comments for the chair. It's just, you know, um, uh, I would be careful when you talk about total margin in various hospitals because there's been very little done about consistent assumptions on how, how those are built, the variation of the pension funding. There's other different accounting structures that affects balance sheet evaluation that is pushed to that line. Uh, the second item, I think, from the awareness of how how this process is connected to the commercial rate setting process, 
and just to share the rates that were approved through Vermont Health Exchange, that they range between 5.8 and 6.8%. And if you look at those growth factors, regardless of if it's NPR growth or what the average commercial growth is, those increases are 180% to 210% of what we're talking about today. So, you know, I know we're talking about adjusting commercial rates, and we also know that the Greenmount Care Hospital review process only covers a portion of those expenses in those rates. So I've said this before, and I worry about that all of that burden in commercial you know, rate setting process, which it is a burden, okay? The facts of that is balanced on this process that doesn't cover all of the expenses in that, in that. So, you know, you know, we're talking about 3.1 and 3.2. I think these are historical, very low growth rates compared to where, you know, the past processes have been, but those are very small percentages when you compare it to the commercial acts that we just the third thing I would like to point out is Maureen said something about a strategic plan, and I do think there is a strategic plan. It's the all payer model. There's a commitment that this state made to the all payer model about curtain growth factors as far as participating lives. And that's commitments, you know, that was made to CMS. And I, I, I also think by this board, too. So I don't want to lose sight of that in this process. And then the other thing, which this may vary by hospital, um, depending on what you are basing your decisions on. But I just want to caution that a 1% in the hospital process isn't a 1% in the commercial process because of the difference of the timing of the dates. Theirs, are, theirs is on calendar here. So basically a 4% increase in the hospital will process because it starts in January. The effective rate increase for the budget here is three percent. So I would just ask them, ask you to consider that because you know the decision for this budget process carries over into October through December of that next following you know year, and there's a whole new set of inflation assumptions that kick in in October, and a lot of those inflation assumptions are contractual arrangements that hospitals have with employees. So I just don't want you to lose you know, sight of that. You, you know, every time that you reference you know, 1% and if you do a calculation backwards to get, say, 3.2%, that you know, if you're doing that on the whole, it's probably taking the hospital a little bit further backwards. But it depends on how you look at each hospital on you know, how that math works. So I, that is something that I did want to share. And you know, you know, we fully support taking a look at the NPR, acknowledging that the ACO accounting adjustments, you know, uh, throws a little bit of wrench into the process of how you compare apples and apples. You know, and we would just like to emphasize that, you know, any comparison should be apples to apples. Okay, is there anyone else from the public who wishes to uh, make a comment or a question? If not, I think at this point it's already 4.11 and I don't see us having a meaningful conversation in four minutes. Yeah, but it's four minutes. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so um, is there any old business to come before the board? Seeing none, is there any new business to come before the board? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed?